It's your boys, Nick Taylor and Rudy Rodriguez Shomat with Come On Now, the podcast. We are missing our moderator this evening, Donald, uh, but we are holding the fort for him, and I will do my best <clears throat> to keep us on time and not go into 65-minute back and forth without Rudy, pause. Fuck, Rudy, fuck that. We already know when it's us two and nobody <laughs> to control us, all hell breaks up. Yeah, it does. It, it does. Um, but we but are yeah. on a two-hour time limit today. <clears throat> yeah, we need to be because we had we've been having some um, technical difficulties after recording, and uh, we're going to try to keep it under two hours. Uh, we'll do our best, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> there's no guarantees. The baby so, asleep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Your baby's wanna, not out yet. So not we, yet. Not yet. So we have all uh, the time. Yeah. So, um, just to jump in off the top, we want to say thank you. Because we broke 500 subscribers and 3,000 hours, 3,000 hours is it? I think it is on uh, on YouTube. Views? So we, yeah, 3,000 hours, like hours of viewing, mm-hmm. and we are now monetizable. So we are there because of you. We thank you so much for that. Um, we are going to be coming out with some memberships, which will include a variety of things. What they are yet, I do not know. I might uh, be able to. I might be able to afford a Shador watch. You know, I, I mean, hey, that's a possibility. <laughs> that is a possibility. So, you know, um, thank you everyone for that, and we're going to keep pushing forward. We are close to six hundred subscribers, and just help us get there. So, Nick, introduce yourself after I've rambled on for a minute. Hey, it's Nick Taylor, man. I'm pretty sure y'all know me by now. If y'all tuned in, y'all know who I am, man. I'm Nick Taylor. Three-time CFL champ, former NFL player, arena football player, D1 basketball player. I've been around. I know a lot about basketball. I know a lot about football. I just know a lot about topics in general and life. Um, We bring you a good show all the time. We get into it. We have fun. We hope that y'all continue to enjoy. Come on now. And um, that's it. That's all I got for y'all. So I will give you a teaser. Nick is going to piss off a lot of his brethren in the football community. So don't get off this thing. Make sure you watch every segment all the way to the end. Cause I know it's coming at the end. He's going to piss y'all off. Y'all gonna be coming after him, looking to slice his head off for the blasphemous shit. He's about to say, I think they'll leave. understand. They will not. I will leave it at that. So we're going to jump right into a quick glance at the NBA playoffs. <clears throat> The Nuggets are down 2-0 to the Minnesota Timberwolves. I think you saw my post, the video we posted. Uh, I gave you props. Show, showing my um, You're I'm a prophet. prophet. I'm a You're prophet. A prophet. I call Rudy a prophet, guys. I showed him some love today. So um, it might be the last time. So remember this. This is May 8th of 2024. It might be the last time, but he did call it and said that Jamal Murray was key in his calf. If his calf is not right, they will be in trouble. And so far, that's what it looked like. What what do you think of the Minnesota Timberwolves defense, though? My goddamn shit. There are some fucking wolves out there. They are literally the Timberwolves. They are wolves. They are hounding them, man. They are playing junkyard defense. They are letting – the referees are giving the fans – what we've been clamoring about for the past few years. We said we wanted more defense. We wanted people to get away with a little bit more bumping and grinding. Shout out to R. Kelly. Um, and we wanted to see those things happen. And we are seeing all of those things happen this year in the playoffs. The referees are letting them play. And the Timberwolves are taking advantage of it. But it starts with Anthony Edwards. He's the leader. He's the junkyard dog. So when he comes out there and he shows that, you know, I'm a defender, I'm going to do it on both sides of the court. Everybody has to follow and get in line. Because Anthony Edwards kind of has some Michael Jordan in him. I'm not going to say the rest of his guys are, 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 are Steve Kerr. You know, he has some guys out there that look like they'll punch him back. But Anthony Edwards looked like he'll punch these guys if they don't fall in line and do what the heck he's doing as the leader. And they all are following in line. You could tell who are best friends on that team. 
Anthony Edwards, Mac Daniels, and Nikhil Alexander. You can tell that they hang out together because they are on one freaking accord all the time. They are pressing each pressing these players from the half court line, and they're not letting them get any room to breathe. And it's just, man, I always talk about how it's so hard to play defense in now in today's NBA. And Rudy say that's bullshit. That's bullshit. And I'd be like, nah, it's fucking hard, man. With the rules, with the way that people can shoot nowadays, the court is spread out, and the way these players can shoot off the dribble, it's fucking hard to guard. But the Timberwolves, they are guarding like fucking, man, college, man, college basketball defense, man, high school defense. They are pressuring you full court hands. They're in the passing lanes. They're pressuring the ball full court. I mean, the whole way. Um, I think, actually, and Rudy's not going to agree with me. Rudy Gobert being out helped them. It really helped them because they had one outlet in game one. They were, letting, they were letting Gordon bring the ball up the court because he was the only guy not being pressured so much because he was getting guarded by Gobert. Gobert is tall and he's long and he could, you know, affect the, the lob passes and things of that nature because they put him on Aaron Gordon. But he's the one person that's not going to pressure the ball past the three-point line so much. So they had an outlet to give it to Aaron Gordon, let him bring it up, and he could orchestrate the offense just a little bit and then get them into the offense and get the ball to Murray and set screens and things of that nature. It was a little bit free-flowing. But when Gobert missed that game and they put in they put in um Walkathon Cal Anderson, uh, slow foot Cal Anderson, who goes in his own pace, Paul Pierce mode, they were able to get up on everybody. They was able to get up on Joker at half court and not let him get comfortable. They were able to get on Jamal Murray, Aaron Gordon, everybody. Nobody was comfortable. And that's one thing that Minnesota Timberwolves did. They played like fucking wolves. They was out there. They were hounded. It was great to see, man. It was some old school basketball that we thoroughly love to see. But I didn't think that we could see that to that extent. It was amazing to see. Well, we have to admit that the Nuggets didn't score 100 points in game one either, though. So They, they did, but they didn't I, score I under, 80. There, that was, I mean, I think that's a combination <laughs> of factors. Um, I think the reality at this point is that the Timberwolves are better. They're younger, they're faster, they're better. They're bigger. They're bigger, they're faster, they're better. I mean, it is – I'm shocked. I'm wow. honestly I'm, – I'm shocked. You know, I did say that I thought based on that first series against the Suns that they were scary. By the way, I'm looking at this screen right here because the Panthers and Bruins just had a major fight with everyone in the ice fighting. The Panthers were 5-1 to one on Boston, and everyone just got into a fight. I think everyone's being put on the bench now in the penalty box. <laughs> but <clears> – <throat> That's why I love hockey because that'll never change. Um, until I, I, yeah, until someone someone dies, uh, it's happened before. Yeah, okay. It has happened actually. I think it has. Happened. I mean, yeah. I know one guy has ne- his neck slice with a skate. Well, I'm talking about but, from the fight, and I think one time uh, something nah, they, don't, they don't. They don't. Yeah, there was. There's been some criminal <laughs> criminal arrests off of fights in, in the NHL. Um, but no, I think uh, for the most part, what you have is you have Carl Anthony Towns, who is a very very skilled player. Yeah. As long as he and as long as he stays on the floor, he is a mismatch to everyone on the. He's a mismatch to every single player on the Nuggets. Anthony Edwards is unguardable. I am flabbergasted at how good this guy is, and I've watched Minnesota play, and I know Nick said earlier this year that he was he benefits the most by winning a championship. I don't agree with that. Still, I think I still think it's now, Jason Tatum. It's looking more and more like <laughs> that. I, what I, I, I still think it's Tatum, and I still it, think it's Tatum because. Once Anthony Edwards takes over, I don't know that anyone's going to be able to do anything about it. And if they can keep that roster. They have a lot of money issues it, with that it, roster. It, I think they had some some um, owners and it, shit, it, shit go on with that because they wanted to kind of break up the roster and they were like, but, well, no. <laughs> I, they're, they got a squad, man. They got young players. Someone just got kicked out of this game. Um, they got young players. They are talented. Anthony Edwards is an absolute savage. The kid is in, he's 22 years old. He's incredible. <clears throat> and I know people don't want to, he doesn't want to compare to Michael Jordan, but like, sorry, then suck. Like, what do you want? 
if you want if you don't want to be compared to the greatest player of all time, then just suck. Rudy. Because reality Rudy. is you're damn good, bro. Rudy. Yeah. That's just something you say. I know. That's I know just, it is. I wish you wouldn't even say it. I wish you would just say it's freaking flattering and I'm very humbled by it and call it a day and I and I appreciate it. No, don't say to... don't compare me to that. Why no, the he... hell not? Compare he... me to it. No, I want cause... those expectations. It's... As much as he he loves the limelight and he he embraces it, he don't want that part of it. He he knows like deep down inside he knows what the fuck is up. Bro, he, he does it. This. He does it, but he does this not shooting jumpers all day. Like, no, he, he attacks. He's, he's attacked. He's in attack he's, mode. He's on the attack post, mode. he gets a little oh. he gets a little guard on him. He takes him to the block. He does what the fuck he wants. He he has a fade game. He has he has Kobe Bryant. He has Kobe Bryant on um, on um, foot skills. And shit like, like, he has Kobe uh, Bryant's foot skills. He has Jordan athleticism, and he has D Wade. And he has D Wade slash ability. I, I mean, I'm sorry, man. The Panthers just scored again, and there's Rudy, another five on five fight. Rudy, pay attention. I'm sorry. This is crazy shit. Like they're body slamming each other. I apologize, people. This is why I don't watch sports while we record because <laughs> this is insane. This guy just did a double leg takedown, like an MMA fight just now. This is bananas. And we're kicking their ass 6-1. Let's go, Panthers. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Where's Donald? Um, yeah, uh, it's his fault. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> no, I, I look, man, I, I'm just – you remember what I said at our All-Star all -Star break. I thought, I'm like, you're not a competitor. You're freaking dogging a, a competition. Yeah. And I think they should always be wanting to win. But I changed my mind on that now. I better see him compete next summer, Ooh. next next, next All-Star game, you know, when and, and not dog it like he did. But the dude is amazing, and I do think – do I think that the Gobert situation had an impact? Yeah, because I think it changes matchups, and I, I do think it, there was adjustments it helped, that, it helped, it helped. that the Nuggets weren't prepared for. I didn't um, think it would help them like that. I thought they were, the, the Nuggets would benefit. But benefit I from, thought they'd benefit from it too. The, the weirdest shit that happens, though, and you come – we've been talking about it the whole time, is um, Gobert when, – when Joker see Gobert one-on-one, -on -one, when he actually gets Gobert on him, he takes him to the block, and he punishes him. Punish him. Gobert can, cannot stop him. But when he has Nas Reed and Carl Anthony Towns, he stays more on the outside. He's more of a facilitator. He's doing a dribble handoff to, to Murray and things of that nature. They're quicker. You know? But he's stronger. He has a little bit more, you know. Nas Reed blocked his shot in one possession, back-to-back -back shots he made him, he made him look in like one high, possession. He made him look a high school kid. Like, it, it was what, what was crazy about it was – he knew where to put his hand. You see how many shots that Joker gets over Anthony Davis, who's supposed to be an exceptional defensive player, and yet he can never block a Joker shot. Yet Nasri was 6'9", put his hand in the right spot, and took it out twice, back to back. <laughs> and I, I just found that their defense is, is inspiring. I love yes. it. I, I enjoy it. And I think they're going to sweep them. I don't mm -hmm. think the Nuggets are going to win the game in Minnesota. I think the Minnesota crowd is going to be absolutely bananas. And I think the Nuggets are shook. I, I, do, I think they're shook. They looked. Let's ask. This is going to come up later. Jamal Murray should have been suspended. And if the series was one-to-one, -one, he would have been suspended for game three. No, You know what? He would have been suspended. He I, would have been suspended. We cannot I, sit here and throw a fan out of a building for throwing a, a cup on the floor. But a player who not didn't just throw one item, but two items on the floor. Rudy. Gets a hundred thousand dollar fine. He's making fifty million dollars. If anything, you should have found him ten million dollars there because no. wow. what he could have, he could have, he could have drastically Cut. affected the outcome of the series. If one of those, I'm doing my rant already. God damn Cat. it, cat, 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 and anyone, any big time player for Minnesota, and someone did actually kick the ice bag or the heat pad or whatever heat it was. Heat heat someone heat. hit it. If someone from the Minnesota Timberwolves had turned an ankle. And gotten hurt. That would be, I, I, I don't want to say that that would be grounds to literally have a freaking forfeit of a series, but that would be grounds to forfeit a series. It's stupid. I know it's stupid. No, but you, I, but but what? Then what's to stop the other team now, the Timberwolves from doing the same shit and throwing shit on the court at, at Jamal Murray's feet or at Joker's feet during a game because so, you're mad because you're getting your ass kicked. So. We have to understand double standards. We can't get mad when they <clears throat> do suspend players and then don't get mad when they don't suspend players, when they're top players. 
We can't. We can't. We can't have but it that's both not, ways. He threw. He threw we, an object we, at a player. We at, are, at the referees and the players. We, we threw it on the court. We are still mad at Draymond Green getting suspended when we don't. I'm think not. Should, I'm not. But, but a lot of he people. Did, he, he had picked up fucking like 18 technical fouls in like 17 games. But did he really do anything? But besides call LeBron you, a bitch. You mean you mean no no besides, he punched him he punched him in the fucking balls, bro. He didn't even touch him. He didn't touch him. Well, he, LeBron fell on the floor like he got hit by a cannon in his crotch. So oh, you know, right. I mean, you're defending LeBron. Oh, I'm defending LeBron. Yeah, <laughs> dude, you can't kick. No, Draymond Green has a history of kicking people. Another fight going on. What the fuck is going on here? No, they are fighting every play. No, so um, we we can't get mad. You can't when... kick people in the. You can't kick people in the crotch, bro. So he he did throw a towel at first. He I threw mean... a towel first at the referee, and then he threw the the heating pad onto the floor while the play, the game is in mo- him going like you. You can't do it. You gotta cannot do that. But let's. I, I, I'll save that for my rant because that's part of my rant. Um, no, but that do I said, think he should be suspended? <clears throat> yes, but do I want him to be suspended? No, we cannot suspend him well, at this moment. We like we couldn't suspend him bead for the shit that happened. Like it just he should have been suspended. He should have been suspended for that too. I, we have to, look. I get it. You want to have players on the court. You want the best players on the floor. But if the best players are going to be doing absolutely dumb, ridiculous dumb shit, shit that 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 causes them to miss a game or two games, because truthfully, I think Jamal Murray should be suspended for the rest of the series. Um, not one game. I think what he did was so egregious and out, out of out of control that I don't I don't care what your I don't care what, what your are, what are you thinking at that moment? What are you thinking? What are you th- yeah, ex- Nick? I got a te- I got a technical foul for breaking my pen at an AAU game. Rudy, I threw thing. it on the ground and it popped all the way to mid court to the referee's foot. I didn't throw it at the ref. I threw it on the ground right on my feet. I and was pissed. It. I broke the pen. The pen split in pieces, and it went to the referee, and he teed me up. He almost that's, threw me out. And that's what and that's what he should have did. He should have been so mad. He should have threw it right in so front of him. Straight down. Yeah. That's what he should have did. And now we're looking at him like, bro, you cannot do that at that moment. It's just bad. It's a bad look. It fucks up his team momentum, everything that's going on. And it's just, it's just a bad look it, for the it's league. A punk, it's a punk move to me. I, I, it's yeah. a punk move. And if someone had gotten hurt, they're lucky no one got hurt. And I think that's the only thing that saved him. Because if yeah. someone had gotten hurt, he'd be gone. 100%. I think if the series was 1-1, he would have been suspended because they would have looked at it like, okay, it's 1-1. The series won't be over if they lose game three. Because if they lose game three, the series is done. Uh, we know this. Uh, but, yeah, I didn't like that at all. And I'll talk about that more later on. They, but, yeah. they, hold on, hold on. That's what I meant to say. I almost forgot it. It, it, it slipped past me in your, your rant. They gave Anthony Edwards a tech for just staring. For looking at the dude. So when somebody he did this. Did, so when somebody do the thing that that Jamal Murray do, you're like, come on now, referees, what's going on? But the referee didn't see it, but the league saw it, and they saw it twice. <laughs> they actually rescinded that technical foul on Anthony Edwards. They, they rescind, which is stupid because you know here's the thing: they rescinded for the purposes of the entirety the of the money. playoffs and the money. and money and suspensions later on potentially. But what they don't factor in is what if they had lost by one point. Do we go back and play the game again? No, that's not how it This is the problem with these officials now. And we could talk about that also because let's talk about the Knicks series right now. The Knicks and Pacers, game one was directly impacted by buffoonery. Buffoonery from officials. Yeah. Failures of these officials. Yeah. These officials, it makes it look, I mean, God damn, if they're not pushing gambling enough in professional sports now, it makes you think everything's for sale. Because watching a guy get called for a kick ball when he clearly hit it with his hand, I don't care what your angle is. There's three refs on the court. They had a layup going the other direction. It was a four-on-one break, although they may have shot a three in today's generation. Um, you know, you have a four-on-one break, and you're sitting here calling a kick ball, which then gives the ball back to New York, and then they hit a three. You changed the game. Now, let's get into the next part of that. <clears throat> They come back down the floor, and what happens? Miles Turner sets a screen, gets called for a moving screen. I was watching first take this morning. They said, or it was yesterday, it was, no, it was this morning, 147 screens were set in that game, and only two got called for a foul. 147. Now, it was a moving screen. It, it, was, an actual, it, it was an actual moving screen. The play before, 
DiVincenzo set a screen on uh, the, the guy that got called. I think it was Naismith. Naismith got called. The one that got called for the kickball. Yeah. He set a screen on him where he la- literally grabbed his arm and they didn't call that. It's like you didn't call that right there, but then you called that there. That's the frustration for fans because it was a moving screen. It was moving. And we can say it was. And we can say it's, it's minimal. But if you're not calling that shit throughout the entirety of the game, you cannot call that there. Again, we had this conversation of UConn, Iowa with the women, where that screen was a lot worse, actually. That screen in that game was so much worse. The angle made it seem like it wasn't, but it was. It it was so much worse. She had her knee out. She's over here. Her leg is out here. She throws her arms up. Like, everything that she did, she committed like three fouls in that screen. Mm -hmm. But, and then, I mean, you couple that with the bad call there. You have a bad call here. Oh, by the way, Mitchell Robinson is now out for the next six weeks. With oh, yeah. a knee problem. So that's a big, big loss for the Knicks. So they're about to play six players now. Yeah. It, it, they're about to, yeah, it's going to be bad for them. So. 43, 48 minutes a game. <clears throat> What's the score of the game right now? Can I look backwards? Look back, man. I'm watching the Panthers game here. 107, 105. Because one thing we know about the Knicks game is going to come into the Their both teams are blowing leads. The Pacers have a 10 point lead. The Knicks get a 10 point lead. I mean, the Pacers led that game. I think what the Knicks led by what nine points? No, the Pacers led by what eight, nine points. And four minutes left, blew the whole lead. It's going to be a fun series, but I, I just, I'm tired of watching officials blow, just blow calls. What do you think? Man, Rudy, officials been blowing calls forever. So one thing you have to know. You have to get lucky with the officials to win the championship, and you have to be able to play through officials to win the championship. You have to be good enough to overcome officials, and you have to be good enough to take the shit that they give you sometimes. Like, that's just how sports is. The officials are always going to be a part of the game. We can't take them out. They help the game. They hurt the game. they just like us. Just like you have a bad play as a player, you have a bad play as a coach, they have bad plays as officials. I mean, you expect them not to. But God damn, the game moves so fucking fast. What you fucking think going to happen? It's going to happen, guys. We cannot avoid it. They are going to make bad calls sometimes. It's just what it is, man. And you have to be a, a, a player that's good enough, a coach that's w- well enough to, to train your team to overcome that. If you can't overcome that, you're not going to be a good team. You're not going to win. You have to. You can't be like Mike Malone stumping on the court and, and going out there and doing that type of stuff. That's not going to help. You can't be like Jamal Murray and throwing stuff at the ref. That's not going to help. You got to know that that shit is going to happen. Because some days you're going to get it in your favor. And some days you're going to get it not in your favor. And you're going to feel like you got slighted. And sometimes you might get slighted. And that's just what it is. I never got mad at officials. I might have said a word or two to them and let them know. But I also knew that it was 47 other minutes in the game. Or in football-wise, when I played, there's 59 other minutes in the game. 59 other minutes in the game where I could affect the game positively where the ref don't affect it so much. And we have to understand that, like, as a team, we can't get too mad. As fans, hell yeah, we're going to get fucking mad. We're going to get upset. People are betting and we're losing by one point, so our whole parlay is fucked up. Like me. but um, Make make the mistakes earlier. We can't, but you can't, make the mistakes you can't, earlier. So the thing about it, we had this I, I know. So when so the referees make a call, it's a bad thing. The referee they don't never, make but it. They never- they never no, got no, together no, to discuss no, that so, ball. So I'm saying the referee make a call, it's a bad thing. The referee don't make a call, it's a bad thing. Like, we just have to accept it, what it is. Like, it's going to be fuck-ups in there. It, it happens. Like, so so the NBA players, the players are going, man, oh, you should let us play. And would you let them play? No, they don't. Oh. They don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. They're all pussies now. Sorry. No, no, sure. no. So, so they, well, they hopped in about the, the, the call on UConn and said, oh, let them play. Let them have Of course, of course or, they did. Or a lot of them. When you're not in the game, when you're in, when you're not in the game and it's, and it's going, not going for you, you're like, oh, let them play, you know. Now, when you're in the game and you get hacked across the face and you're going for your layup for your hand one and things of that nature, you want the call, right, LeBron? Of course okay. you do. I mean, okay. we've seen we've, we've seen LeBron's temper tantrums every time he gets a foul not okay, called properly so, for him. He so has temper tantrums beyond belief. Nobody, so we're, it's never going to be a perfect system. So no, get I don't. The, I, get the fuck I over it. No, I, 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 I agree with you. I, I, I completely no. agree with you in that regard. But I, when, I, when, when you mentioned, like, the players want to be allowed to play, the rules are changed because of the players. So, so the players like, have been so complaining. When, so when we so get when to, they, so so now when we get to, now, and they want to play, but you don't want to play 82. So, you don't want to have – I'm sorry. Go ahead. When, when we get to the last minute of the game, <clears> is, 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 are we not supposed to make any calls? 
Or are we send, supposed, supposed to make calls? What calls are no, we supposed to make? No, it's supposed to be tackle football at that point. So is it supposed to be egregious where we have to make the call? Like, so I'm trying That's to understand. That's the way it makes it sound. So, but then we're on the other end and we want the call. So, like, shut the fuck up. Go out there and play basketball and deal with whatever the situation is. You're going to get the call sometimes. Sometimes you're not. Put yourself what? in a situation where it don't have to come down to it. Watching players complain every time a guy swings an arm trying to move his body or grab a rebound and then a, a hand hits the face or an elbow hits the face and then they get called for a flagrant and foul. I think that's the worst thing that's, that exists in basketball now. Like now it's like a guy gets elbowed in the face by accident. It's automatically just he, he, he flops on the ground. He holds his face. He might not have a thing. He's doing this bullshit that you're doing right there. Review all this crap. And these fucking prima donna pansy motherfuckers do the same shit every game. And now they sit here and cry and say, I want to be able to play the game and just let, let us play. No, you really don't. Because if you really wanted to play, go watch 1990s New York Knicks Miami Heat. I don't give a shit what anyone says. I know you say that defense and whatever. New York Knicks Miami Heat 1990s were tackle football games. They were played in the 70s and the 80s because they were killing each other. Because they and, got away with murder. And, and if shoot. you – and they, well. The shooting, I'm telling you right now, the shooting would not be as good as you think it is if they were allowed to do what they did in the 90s, physically. It would no. not be. It would well, not be as good. Well, Dude, I, I, don't watched, have to, I, I watched I'm the just saying, thing. I'm just saying, I don't have to come down to the paint so much. I could let it fly. You can let it fly, but you're going to get landed on and a foul won't get called. As long, as long as that ball is out of your hand, I can land on you. I can now, land in your space. You, could, you can't oh, sit here and cry and say, oh, you didn't give me six feet to land in. I mean, that, that makes a difference with these guys. These, know, that's that call, psychological, Nick. That call, it's psych- it, it call happens every now and then. But Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. You play football. Go ahead. Go Let ahead, me go ask ahead. you this question. Go ahead. Go ahead. You think the psychological nature of wide receivers is different today than it was 20 years ago? A thousand percent. I agree. A thousand I agree. percent. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the same thing that exists in basketball. There's a psychological effect because they know you as the DB cannot – decapitate that motherfucker when he comes across the middle. Now you have to literally watch him catch it and then try to punch it out with a hand or hit him with a shoulder in the arm or some bullshit giving up an easy catch, which 20 years ago, Steve Atwater or Lewis Oliver or Ronnie Lott or one of them badass motherfuckers would have killed you. And in your case, you're a DB. You would have had the, you would have had your highlight fucking video decapitation, decrete hit, that you always wanted to have. And in the generation that you played in, you pretty much weren't permitted to have it yep, because yep. they changed the game and they made it. So psychologically wide receivers don't have that fear anymore. I mean, and I don't think, I don't it, think shooters it, have that fear it, anymore. It still hurts. I don't give a fuck what you I say. I know it, it hurts. I know I'm, it I'm hurts. just saying it still hurts when you get that shoulder put into you. You can still get that shoulder right to your sternum <laughs> and it can hurt. Now, but the, 20 the years helmet, ago, it was, it was the, the crown helmet. of your, it, it was the crown of your helmet into your ear hole. Yeah, that was different. Into that your was chin. Different. That was different. That's what football was. It still fucking hurts. I don't give a fuck. What I understand said. it hurts, but psychologically, there's a massive difference about cut, going across the middle of the field I'm a, I'm to, have Ray Lewis, to have Ray Lewis kill you, or today, Ray Lewis would be ejected from every single game. And and, and I think that's the problem in the NBA is that they, they these guys cry about what they don't want to have happen. They want to be able to play now. Well, dude, you didn't want to play all year. You cry about every time you get bumped. You guys are the biggest prima donna pansies I've ever fucking seen. You cry about how many games you play. You cry, 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 cry. And I'll tell you right now, that's why I like the Timberwolves. I like them because they look like teams from the 90s. Junkyard dogs. But they can score. But but, but I said that. Even though I picked Denver, what what did I say, Rudy? I said. We both said Murray. I I said said they're guarding Phoenix like some fucking hounds. Like. Yesterday yeah. was crazy, though. They were really, 30 at halftime. They were guarding all five players like that. That's they the were problem. everywhere. It was bananas. It was bananas. It was amazing. They, they, it was can amazing. They, can they keep it up? That's why I always wondered about basketball. At you, home? So, yeah. No, no. So I always wondered <clears> about <throat> basketball. Why teams don't go a little bit, like, why coaches don't go a little bit deeper into the tank with full court presses? A one-two-one press. I know that NBA players I, should be able to handle a little bit more, but we we have seen that they can't sometimes. That these players, grown men who've been dealing with presses for a long time, still can't handle the pressure of another man, two people being in front of them, and and, and putting their hands up and pressuring them. We we still see that. I don't understand why when you get to the NBA that coaches just sit think that you have to sit back and 
only way you could coach is when you sit back and how we deal with screens. Why we can't force the tempo or force the, the you know how to how to the, how to play in this game. And we have one to one presses. We have different defenses that we could throw out there rather than just a regular, regular fifty five man defense. It's like it's more things that you could do. Like when I see the Heat do that thing, they turn the ball over. They they get ball. They get deflections. They get a lot of plays. Every time I see a team change it up and run like those different kind of press, these NBA players sometimes still can't handle that shit. It's something that they should have learned way back then. How to break a press. So I don't understand why it's not. I, I don't know if the court's too long. We think we should, they're gonna tire out or things like that. I don't know, Rudy, but I don't. I, every time they do it, it works when they change it up. Like when I it agree comes down you. to the end of the game and and people get pressed and they run to the corners. You like you learn not to run into I, the fucking corner I, at a fucking third grade. But they still go out there with where they right there by the back court <laughs> and out of bounds and they get trapped by back court, out of bounds, and the players. Four four players are trapped. Nick, <laughs> Nick, 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 this is where I can tell you that just from my age that I see. You, you're right. You're a thousand percent right. I'm sick saying that, but you're a thousand percent right. The difference of these guys today is they don't handle the ball well. I don't think these guys can handle the ball. No, and no, they, they can handle and the and ball. They can handle pressure. Their, ba- their basketball. Pressure. Okay, the ball under pressure. They, I think the basketball IQ is atrocious. Um, is as is worse than I see from high school teams. I watch these guys play. I'll give you an example. This was yesterday. <clears throat> did, did you see the end of the Mavs game? Mm-hmm. Okay. In the fourth quarter, I think it was, they're up like, the OKC was up like 12. And they have, I think it was Williams. Jalen, is it Jalen Williams? Jalen Williams. I think Jalen Williams. I think it was Jalen Williams. Don't quote me. He have a break. He has a three. He pump fakes. Dude flies right by him. Instead of taking two or three dribbles in and taking a 17-foot shot, he takes a step in, and then he sidesteps backward to the left (laughs) and shoots a three. It went in. It went in. That's not a good play. I don't care. It will never be a good play. You made an easier shot harder. It doesn't make sense. It It is the thing that gnaws at me as a basketball fan and someone who's actually coached, because I actually have a little bit of coaching brain, and it drives me bananas. Because it's not intelligent basketball. Rudy. Because it was a knockout blow. It was. Rudy. But it's like, what are you doing? You had a layup. You had a 15, 17, and 15 footer, Rudy. and you decide to go sideways, which most guys would miss that shot. Rudy. And These players are more comfortable <clears throat> shooting. Well, after those, travels, I know. They're more comfortable shooting those threes than a mid range jump shot. The mid range jump is shot crazy. is. No, because the mid range jump shot crazy. takes a lot of. Technique, skill, art, skill. it does take a lot skill. of skill to shoot that ball when you're closer to the rim, where you can't just. Uh. You realize how insane what you said is? That's I, insane. I, you know it, that, right? It is, but it, it is. Harder. It's insane. I, as a basketball player who played a lot, those shots, and I had my run where I like, I, I enjoy shooting mid range more than deep shots, but now I don't know. I feel more comfortable shooting further, maybe because of my strength. I don't know, but. The mid range are having a touch, like to shoot that ball right there from 15 well, to 17, 18, 20 feet. It feels just weird sometimes. And little because, short Why? Shot. Because they're, they're shooting 28 footers in practice all the they, damn they, time. That's what they work on. They don't know how to. Well, that's not improving their game. That's like, it, it is, but there's a level of intelligence and basketball IQ that they fail at today. And I think that's a big problem. I mean, if you have and, it, and, if you have it, you do it. Bro, I watch guys get into the basket and throw no. the ball, inbound the ball from under the backboard. Because who you think guys about, in the NBA? But think of. Now, when you have the mid range game, your game goes no, up to no, another no, level. No, look, no, at Jaylen, no, look at Jalen Brunson. Look at look Brunson at Ant- killing them with mid range. Oh, look at Anthony Harris killing them with mid range. Ka- 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 Kawhi, La- no, Kawhi, La- Kawhi <laughs> Leonard's entire game is mid range. If that that guy, Jimmy Butler's game is mid range. It's an art. It's an art. DeMar DeRozan's game is mid range. He has an average at 30,000 points before his career is over. It's a loss. It's or a close loss to it. It's, it, tough. It's, it, tough. It, it. it's just. It's just bad basketball, and I and I think that translates in other areas where you see complete retard retardation in basketball. It's retard. It's it's just it's brain dead. Again, I'm not saying retard like people want to say because I don't want so fucking sensitive. The basketball IQ is terrible, and watching a guy inbound a ball from behind the backboard, which I you get you learn in the, as a second grader, not too. as a second grader. You don't learn that as a fucking 22-year-old. And I do think this is also attributable to the AAU culture and the fact that these guys don't stay in school in college. They're, they're, 
Jaime Jaquez came in and was a smash mm -hmm. as what was he, the 22nd pick? Yeah. He's fourth in rookie of the year. You know who he was behind? One, two, and three in the draft. And Chet came out last year, really. Chet was last year. He was number two. Juan Bayan, number number one. And, and Brandon Miller was number two or three. Like, and then he's and he's there. Another guy that made it was the Pujnet, whatever his name is, from Jordan State. Brandon Pup, Pup, whatever his, his name is. Lefty, lefty, lefty. He lefty. was fifth. And lefty. because the kid balled, man. I, I, and he's clearly older because he's not, there's no way that kid's 20 years old or a freshman coming out and looking like that. I don't think he is. I think he, no, he but, came, he, he played like, he was like two years. He was like 21 or something like that. But these guys, like, they don't stay in school. They don't get their games better. They don't improve their actual skills. And then when you get in the NBA, they can barely dribble the fucking ball up the court. For Christ's sakes, Nick, with Tyler pressure. Hero cannot dribble. No, he He's cannot. 24. And one of the 24. He can't dribble without pressure. <laughs> he dribbles the ball off his foot half the fucking time. He passes the ball into the stands. This is the guy that the Heat are asking to be a point guard. No, he's not a and he guy. can't dribble. And, you, and, and they made a big thing about game two. He had 14 assists. He had 14 assists because we hit fucking 23 threes. He didn't set anybody up. He didn't create a basket for somebody that wasn't going to the rim for a layup. All he's doing is passing around the shoe. You pass it here. Pass it here. There's nothing created by that. I remember, like, I, had, I, I, remember I had a game like that in college. <laughs> they said, Nick had, I had nine assists. I say, bitch, I ain't do shit. You do shit, but pass the guys who make shots that are wide open. Like, my guy, if my they guy, make them, like, fuck. But he didn't create my, shit. I had my guy, Alex Galindo. He could shoot <clears> that bitch <throat> from the fucking parking lot. There you go. Easy. Without jumping. Like. And Tyler Hero, how long now? How, how many years we had to watch this fucking guy turn the ball over off of his foot or or lose the, or cost us a seven seed in, in, in the freaking – Playing game he versus the damn he Sixers. Under, he can't. Under, he can't take. He's that. a basketball moron. Hey, he has hey, no IQ. Rudy, 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 Rudy. I have a question, and I've been waiting to answer. Ask this question. Uh -huh. what's, what's the Oklahoma, um, Oklahoma City, um, Thunder? Name? Thunder name. What's their What's their coach name? Don't Don't do that to me. I think it's a <laughs> Diegold or something like that. Is it oh, Diegold? I don't know their coach name to say. I my think life. it's Daigal. I, I I don't I I don't have any fucking idea. I think that's the coach. But whoever he is, uh, Mark, Mark Dagonal. Yeah, Dagonal. I didn't know his first name. I couldn't. I knew it was Di Daigal or something like that. Dagonal. Rudy, I couldn't Rudy, tell you. Rudy. It took me. I it was like a week ago. I said, damn, bro, I got I got to ask Rudy this shit on the podcast because I want to see if he knows. He's thirty nine years old, bro. I don't know. I didn't I didn't know who their coach was, but I know they play. They're the first seed, and I don't know who their coach was, and that's a good thing for him. Because he has two more years to get it done. Because now he's set the bar and it's fucking high. And if he don't get it done in two years, they'll have him out of there. Maybe looking for somebody else. I, I think OKC is going to wipe out the Mavericks. That game last night was pretty freaking impressive. The game was 66-65. Well, uh, and then the that, OKC Thunder absolutely blew him out the building. Well, we know Luca's, I, gonna, I, we know Luca's not going to play like that. Luca's laboring. Time. He's laboring. He is laboring, but we know Luca's going to be a big down. Deep inside I think that. I think OKC wins that series in five. We never talked about that, so I I, I think they were, I thought they were winning five. Damn, um, I didn't even know the name of the coach. So that's the problem. Yeah, it just shows you, like it just shows you, like how the, these national TV shows don't pay any attention to these guys. They ignore Nobody. them all season. Well, they don't talk about them. They blow job the fucking Lakers all year long. And and while well, we want the Lakers, let's talk about the Celtics. Even I mean, even marginally the Heat, you know. But we talk about these same fucking teams over and over and over again. And you ignore teams like Minnesota. You ignore teams like OKC. But the reality is, I love what I'm seeing, and I love it because it's the future of the NBA. Yeah. You're seeing dudes that are balling. You're seeing. I would love to see these two teams stick together, like the, like the Warriors. It's did. hard. It's like, hard. It's I hard. know it's it's hard for money, but I would love to see it. But I think they might be able to do it because the the the, the TV deals are going to explode in the next couple of years. It's, it's so fucking but hard, man. It's hard. I, I would love. To, I'm just saying. I'd love everybody, to see it. Everybody, I'm sick and tired of hearing the Lakers and the Celtics and the but, fuck, other but, than the Heat. But, I'm sick of hearing all the big market teams. But you're gonna and, hear about it forever. Know. That's never gonna stop, Rudy. Really. Well, that's never again, stop. I would hope that OKC. If Kevin Durant wasn't such a bitch. OKC with him and Russell Westbrook, I think at some point would have won. Eventually. I think they would have won. They would have got Kevin you. Durant had never left OKC. And, I believe and, that they would have won. And Russ still had about four more, five more years. Yeah, like he of, quit. He quit on them. And that, that was the biggest punk move I'd ever seen in basketball. 
I wouldn't even compare to LeBron because LeBron's situation was different. You know, it it was different. It, it was a you know, I'm Miami not, Heat was a forty seven win team. The 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 Warriors were a seventy three win team that you mean. just lost in seven to, I and mean, you decide I, I, again. Rudy, but it changes see, the entire. Rudy, it changes the Rudy, league. Rudy, I'm not gonna be mad at that because you know so. The whole Kevin Durant thing, I always love to talk about this just because... We're way off. We're going way over time. No, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. Fuck that. Whatever. All right. Kevin Durant, he joined a player who was a top five player in the league and another player who was top 20 player in the league. Mm -hmm. LeBron joined a player who was top five player in the league and another player who was top 15 in the league. Maybe There's a top difference. 20. There's a how, difference. How? 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 I just named it. I just named uh, okay, it. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me tell you how there's a difference. A top five player in the league and a top okay. 20 player in the league. The difference is those two players were already playing together. I get it was that. already there was already a chemistry. Kevin Durant's a plug in a plug and play player. He's a piece. He easily fits into anyone's system because of how he plays. The the heat situation <laughs> he was did. what it, he did fit. They fucking won, six, they won Phoenix, the championship. Phoenix is not. Oh no, that, that no, that's not that's different because he's already <laughs> longer in the tooth. Like you know, he's long in the tooth and he's trying and, he, and he's playing with uh, with no point guard now. Um, I don't. I didn't think the situation in Phoenix was a plug and play because I don't think that they were good enough. They were. Ne they weren't. Good. They weren't a seventy-three win team the year before, or they a, a 60, champion. They won sixty-three. Sixty. Who, something. who? 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 Who won six? Six. Wait, when Kevin Durant went to Phoenix, they won how many games? Well, the like year 60, they lost. They lost. They, they lost in the championship. Did he go the next exact year, or was it two years later? Was, was it two years later? Maybe I'm I. Don't, I don't remember. I'm. I'm, Damn, I'm asking oh. because I know they lost to the. the, the, the they lost to the Bucks. No, it was, I'm it was, pretty sure it was, it was two, not the exact it was, next year. It was two year. years okay. later because they lost to they lost to Dallas the next year. So he didn't go the next year. If he had gone the next year, then yeah, it would look really funky as well. And I think they, they were, were better the first, with Chris Paul. Well, they were still um, the first seed, I believe. That what are you talking? Uh, um, they were, but they weren't as good. They lost to you Dallas. They were still the first seed, though. But they weren't as good. They, like you can be the first seed and not be as good. The Nuggets, Man. we both thought we we're going to roll through the fucking Man. West. And what's happening right now? They're about to get Dur swept. Durant made the biggest mistake of his fucking life. I, I know we're fought, go, we're he fought. should never have left. He should never have gone to OKC. I mean, he damn sure should have never left Golden State. <laughs> like, he, I, I mean, that guy is. Uh, and and no, that's the. He let the media. And, 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 I, and I understand taking on different challenges. I get it. Like, you know, everybody in the media said, you know, they, they, they shitted on the move that he made. <clears throat> But fuck them, bro. You could have won five championships and been an all-time top ten. He could have by just staying with Steph Curry. And then you know what people would have thought that you were better than Steph Curry, even though Nick Taylor knew that Steph Curry is, is better than you. I I know. I think Steph Curry is better than him. I, know I thought Steph, I thought I Steph was the MVP of the second finals they won. I know Steph Curry made it easier for Durant. absolutely. I know Steph Curry made it easier for Clay Thompson. I know Steph Curry. Made Dre Clark, Dre, Dre, Draymond Green have He's a, making Draymond Green a, a Hall of Famer. Uh, in a hundred, in a, in a, in a ten year career. Quarter, what, $250 million in salary? He's great without, giving Draymond without, Green. Without Steph Curry, Draymond, Draymond Green is out of the league in three to five years. No I doubt. agree. I no agree. freaking doubt about that. It looks and like I, the Knicks are going to win. And I know Steph Curry impact. And, and the only reason he didn't get it that year, that he averaged 28, 9, and 9. Get one bad game. Game, that game fucking four when he had like nine. No, game, three. It was game three. Game three. It was game three. It was game three. He, he led like them nine. in scoring in every game except for game three. In game three, he was like he completely shit the bed. He had ten points. He couldn't make a shot. So and he in, still averaged twenty eight a game in the series. So in reality, I because he really was the he dominated the series. Yeah, he dominated so the series. He really should have three MVPs. So when people he say he only have one. I don't. I say <clears> fuck you. You should have won the first one. Iguodala when it was embarrassing. Like get out of here. I know why they did it. But it was like it's almost like the boxing match where you're sitting here saying, "Oh, he's whooping his ass one round, two round, three round, four round." Oh, he didn't whoop his ass completely in round five, so that other guy must have won the round. No, he didn't win the round. He still lost the round. He just didn't get his ass kicked again in that round. Steph Curry should have three MVPs. Absolutely, absolutely. But let's move on because we just went 44 minutes on that. Um, <laughs> Let's talk about the NFL. Let's keep this one as quickly as possible. We will. We will. The NFL quarterback with the most to prove. What do you think, Nick? Who is yours? So, I can go to Lamar Jackson. Do you need a championship? I can go to Lamar Jackson. I can go to Brett Favre. I mean, Aaron Rodgers. Same person. 
I could go to him. How are you going to come back? What are you going to do with the Jets? You know, I could go to him. I go to Tua Tagovailoa. Can I could go to him also? You have a Ferrari. Time, time out. Time out. You timed out for real. Jalen Brunson had twenty nine points. Get the fuck out of here. Twenty nine points, eleven for eighteen. They won the game by nine. So fifty nine points. I meant to talk about him in the last in the last segment. What six? <laughs> I meant. By- Rudy, Rudy. Points. I'm sorry. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back to this segment. <laughs> yeah, I meant yeah. to talk to him about the, about talk about him in the last segment. Jalen Brunson is a top five player in the league now. I don't care what you say. He's a top five player in the league. He stamps himself as a top Gosh. five player in the league. He has put himself in that conversation. He is literally carrying the Knicks by himself. He's scoring fifty percent of their points in half their games. He scored forty five, and they're scoring ninety. The man deserves the respect. And the New York Knicks got this man on a bargain. I remember Stephen A. Smith going crazy. I remember New York fandom going crazy when they signed this guy to the contract that they signed him to. And now everybody is graveling at his fucking balls because he has turned New York into a fucking team now. By himself, by his lonesome. His his, his co-star is out. He has turned this shit into Villanova Part 2. Him... DiVincenzo it, it is. and Hart. And that's showing you that sometimes chemistry is better than just having talent. Really? Really? Some, Isn't that some, what I just said about some, why the De- Kevin Durant thing was different than the sometime, LeBron thing? Sometimes chemistry matters a little bit more. <laughs> and these guys from Villanova are showing you that just because they care about each other and they love each other, and they'll go to the end of the fucking meat market to to, to play for each other. It's really showing right here, but I just wanted to show Jalen Brunson some love because he deserved it. Because I, I said that he should have been an MVP, MVP conversation. Rudy fired back at me. I was like, you know what? You're right. I just wanted to show him love. So I'm going to show him love because I, that guy gets to his spot wherever he wants to. It's not with speed. It's just with craftiness. And it's just with know-how of how to play basketball. And I, and I, and I salute that man, man. I'm, yeah. I'm becoming a fan. I hate New York. I hate John Starks being up there. I hate Charles Oakley. I hate Star. Starberry being there. I hate Carmelo being there. I hate Latrell Sprewell, Larry Johnson, and Patrick Ewing all being at the game, acting like they won championships all before. I do not like y'all New Yorkers. I do not like y'all at one, not one bit. I do not. I cannot stand none of y'all. Y'all act like y'all won a lot of times and y'all really haven't and y'all not really good. And But last year, Jalen Brunson showed me something against the Miami Heat. He literally carried y'all when Randall was playing like trash and the rest of them were playing like trash. I said, damn, Brunson is that guy. And y'all got him for 20 25 million a year. Y'all got to fucking steal. Shout out to Leon Rose and them people for really turning the Knicks around by stealing him from the Dallas Mavericks. Good job in New York, man. That's the one bright spot y'all got. Fuck the rest of y'all and y'all fans, but him, y'all got a bright spot there. I, I, I think the three of those guys, you know, they do a podcast together. Um, they're so cool together. They're cool. And, they're and, cool. And, I, and I think I have this, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm probably, I'm joking around, but I, I could, like, who knows? I think they probably have a bedroom in each one of their houses with with, with triple bunk beds, like three lever, like yeah. three beds together. Like yeah, they have like one and then a bunk and another bunk above, so they have three beds and they sleep in those beds in the same room at times. <laughs> they they're like they're the chemistry is insane. When they, they can joke around like that with each other, you know, <clears> it's, it's, it's it's genuine. I mean, they combined today for twenty nine forty eight. Forty eight plus twenty eight. That's what seventy five points. Is my math correct? Yeah, 75 points. Brunson had 29, Hart had 19, DiVincenzo had 28, Ananobi had 28, Hartenstein had 14. They had 12 off the bench. I mean, their whole start, they're one well, game on the start. With the Precious Ochoa and, and McBride, that's it. Yeah. yeah they, it's, they, it's crazy. They're missing Bogdanovich, who was going to be a key player. And Hall- Halliburton had 34 today. Damn. The Knicks, uh, actually, My, Miles Turner had six. If they had both, they had Bogdanovich with. Randall, shit. If Randall was healthy, I think the Knicks would be the favorite to go to the finals. With Bogdanovich? Mm-hmm. Like wow. the way, the way, the way, I think they'd be in the finals. Wow. Right now. Like the Wait, way, the way they right they're defense. going so now. We, defense matters. I, yeah, they're defense going. Matters. But anyhow, let's get back to this quarterback thing right. real fast. Pick your right. quarterback. Let's get on with this, man. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like I will stand. I could have went with Lamar Jackson because he has to get over that hump and win a championship. I could go with Brett Favre or, you know. Aaron Rodgers, same person, same guy. 
They did the same thing. Their, their career, their career did exactly the same thing. I could have went with Tua. Who has a Ferrari over here? He has a Bentley on the right side. And now they added a box Chevy in Odell, Odell Beckham. I don't think he's going to give him much, but maybe he could work the middle of the field. They need a receiver to work the middle of the field who get open and, and do little routes and do just be a possession receiver, just move the chain. Can Odell do that? I hope so. They got a lot of speed out there. And A chain. They, they, they're they're amazing. And I couldn't win the tour. They gotta get it done. They should have they should have had home field advantage last year. That fucked them. They went they lost that Baltimore game. That fucked them. Pick one. I'm gonna pick Deshaun Watson. <laughs> okay, God damn, that took a while. <laughs> will, will the real Deshaun Watson stand up? Who is he? Is he the guy that played like shit the first half against Baltimore and then played tremendously and brought him back? Is he the guy that threw 33 touchdowns in his last year in, te- in, in Houston and seven interceptions with, with almost 5,000 yards? Or is he this guy the past two years who threw for seven touchdowns and four to five interceptions with a QBR of 40? Who, who is he? Who is he? I mean, Joe Flacco came there. And he revived the fans. Everybody believed and they thought Joe Flacco could take us somewhere. Joe Flacco. We're talking about Joe Flacco. That's what this the fan base believed. Clearly, Deshaun Watson has rubbed the Cleveland fan base the wrong way. No pun intended. He rubbed them the wrong way. But <laughs> he rubbed them. <laughs> he rubbed that fan base the wrong way. You're on mute, Rudy. I can't hear you. I, I know. Did he tug him too? I, I don't know. He rubbed them, rubbed and tugged them the wrong way. But the song, you have Amari Cooper. You have a good team. All the pressure's on you to get it done. Are you that guy who was an all-pro quarterback? Or are you this guy who's falling off the cliff and getting bad at the at the young age of 28? Or whatever you are. You're still in your 20s. Like, which guy are you, man? Um, Deshaun Watson has the most pressure to, to step up. And this, this, this fan base hasn't won a championship since probably fucking Jim Brown. It's been that fucking long. All right. So it's Deshaun Watson. Deshaun um, Watson is the guy, man. Who okay. is he? Will the real Deshaun Watson please stand up? We want to know. So for me, and I'm going to keep it simple for myself because yeah. I'm a Dolphins fan. Oh, and so you're going to Tua. It's Tua. Um, two was a fraud. Two was a fraud. Two was a fraud. <laughs> two was a fraud. Um, the fact that they're considering signing him to some maximum level crazy contract is <laughs> petrifying to me. I would, I, like I got told, I said earlier this year, I would franchise tag him and make him prove it. You got he's to. a lo- he's a loser under stress. Loser. He's a loser. Loser under stress. Under stress. Under stress. Under stress. Okay. Anyone can play quarterback when they got six yards to throw the ball and no pressure and everyone's open and no, they're not facing pressure. They're not facing blitzes. They're not changing, facing whatever. They're not, they're not under, they're not under stress. Whenever he's under stress, he chokes his ass off. And they're sitting here. I, I, I mean, I would have traded up if I was a Dolphins to go get Michael Penix. Damn. Because he's left-handed and Damn. the two was left-handed. Damn. Our team was built for a lefty at this Damn. point. I, I would have. I, I told you I love Michael Penix. Um, and he's 24, so he's ready to play. Whereas, I, I mean, is Tua even 26, 25? I don't even know how old Tua is. But I can tell you this. Unless he has all day to throw, he can't do shit. He can't run. He's slow. He, he, I mean, I, I don't know what my 40 time is, but his is probably close to mine. Um, Because he is slower than fucking dog shit. He's a professional athlete. He should be running a little bit faster. I would bet he loses a 40-yard race to most of his linemen. Um, I just don't, I don't, I, I got tricked and hoodwinked by him. The first eight games you were on the bandwagon. In the one. first, I was, I was, because I was against him a year ago. He I came. thought he was straight up trash and I, and, I, and he got me. McDaniel got me. They, they, they tricked me. They put up 70 versus Denver. The offense looked fantastic. Defense was playing well enough. And then, and then home uh, Jalen Ramsey shows up, and the defense becomes like lights out. And then Tua forgets how to play football, and it's like, what the fuck is going on here? The game that we lost to the Titans cost us the division, 
Instead, we're traveling to play in zero degree temperature in Kansas City. And then Tua can't win us a game versus the fucking Bills at home. We score 14 points. Like, there's always an excuse built in for Tua, and I'm sick of hearing them. Yeah. They're, they're tired excuses. Enough already. Show up. My father, my father used to say, shit or get off the pot. If you're not going to fucking play, get the fuck out of here. We don't want you here. Most fans of the Dolphins, okay, I'm not going to say that because I, I don't know most fans. I know how most people I know feel. They want Tua gone. They wanted him gone a year ago. This is his last chance, in my opinion, unless we fucking make a horrible decision and give him a five-year extension for $250 million. And if we do that, then we've crippled our franchise for the rest of the ter- for the rest of eternity because I don't see him being the guy. So, yeah, I do think he's the one with the most to prove, the most to prove in the fact that he needs to – and it's not winning a Super Bowl. It's not winning a Super Bowl. It's being – It's just being, it's being competitive. competitive and – and make it those when you need them and make those at the right time. Yeah, I don't live in that bubble of we have to win a Super Bowl to be good. It, it takes like, a lot. It takes a lot. There's too many things that can that need to happen to win a Super Bowl. So are my, eyes, Mahomes. are my eyes seeing what my eyes should be seeing when I watch you? Are you making the right throws, the right reads? Are you putting it in the predicaments to be mm-hmm. a successful team? And that's why I came back to Deshaun Watson. Is he doing that for his team? Cleveland had all. He barely played last year. He played like well, the first five games. Exactly. Or six games that he didn't exactly. Play He's only playing six games. He's just, his 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 completion percentage Man, is his... around fifty nine percent for the That's past awful. two years that they That's played. Horrendous. That's horrendous. In this day and age of, of That's football, horrendous. That's you should horrendous. be around sixty five percent unless you're throwing deep balls all the time. And, and no one does that. And you're not doing that all the time. No one so, does. No one does. So what is my return on investment? What is my ROI for Deshaun Watson? I'm giving him. Fucking forty! I'm giving him guaranteed money, the highest guaranteed contract that was ever gave out before to somebody who didn't even play football the year before. And you know what I'm getting back on this? It's a fucking NFT. I'm getting an NFT fucking return on him. That's what my Roy is. You're getting you're getting um FTX.com. No, no, FTX uh, or a uh, fucking NFT. You know what NFT? Well, is FTX that went that? bank. F- FTX went bankrupt, and well, the guy went to, is in well, prison. Well, well NFT <laughs> is prison. close to it. It's close, really fucking close. That's and a that's, fraud in itself. And that's sure. what I'm getting from him. Y'all told me that I was getting this, and I got this. Y'all told me that this shit was gonna be is gonna elevate me, and and if I invest in this, and we're gonna get championships and conference finals, and all I got was funny. negative 98% you, in return on investment. You, you want a funny, you want to hear something funny? You invest if I could, in if I, if I could trade, If I could trade Tua for Deshaun Watson right now, I'd do it straight up, straight up. You, you sh- in a heart. Why? 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 Because I think Deshaun Watson is actually good. I think what? he's, he was, he was fantastic so, in Houston. He was fantastic. They ruined his career with his bogus nonsense. Five years ago. Was it that long ago now? I mean, they ruined his they they ruined his life with that shit. The 2020. Robert Robert Kraft, the the owner of the Patriots, does it and he gets a fucking slap on the wrist. He doesn't even get fined. Deshaun Watson loses a year and a half of his fucking football career because he got a rub and tug. Like, I mean, maybe people don't like that, but NFL players do that. No. Steven Jackson admits that he people, lived in strip clubs having sex with prostitutes. Look, 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 what are we look, talking about? We're not going to say NFL players. People in general do that. Yeah, well, but, <laughs> but I'm saying because professional athletes have the financial means that typical people don't have to do it on a consistent basis. Rudy, Rudy was on back page for $40. I, why, why do you know that, Nick? I heard about it. I heard about you it. Heard about, <laughs> you heard I'm about it. Gonna... It was advertised on Facebook from back page. Oh, I, never, God. I never myself paid forty dollars for Look, eight. I was, enough... I've been good. I um, I I I Look, been, I I've it, done no, myself pretty well in the it, in it, that it, category. The, but... the, the strip clubs would not exist if it wasn't for men. You know, all these things would not exist if not for men. Let's be honest. Like I know people hate the honesty of the world, and when you're a twenty-five year old with a hundred million dollars, bro, like. Steven Jackson, you know, has admitted that he used to live in a strip club. We know James Harden does. They're not just going there and making it rain. They're yeah. making it rain with ice and, and, and white clouds and, and stuff get, like that. And they're and getting they're, all their investment. And they're getting a return on their investment. They're getting a return on their investment. So I, 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 this, the way they ruined this guy's career, you know, it, it's it, I don't like it because – I know how this shit all goes. One person says something, then everyone else starts coming out 
some individual attorney starts calling out for people to come forward oh, Rudy, and say whatever, Rudy, and then you have a laundry list. I mean, you, and it's you, like you work on, in, you work in that type of field, right? So I do. Kind of so, okay. I do. So this is I do. But, but, that, but that's but that's the but that's the type. But those are the types that I despise because that's what that's what gives that 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 entire industry a bad rap because that's not a a person really trying to help people that's someone trying to get it in my opinion that's my opinion you don't have to like it it's someone trying to get a check and if they get enough people to say something there's no way that you can possibly not believe it because enough people said it it doesn't mean it wasn't still not true if i gave LaShawn watson a massage and i didn't but if i did i might call that guy and say look hey i gave him a massage well, did you rub and tug him? Yeah, sure did. I might get 100K out of that. Yeah, I, I rubbed and tugged him. Remember, these people are not fucking well off. Like, we have to be honest. Like, And I'm not saying that it didn't happen, because I'm sure it actually happened. I, I believe it did happen. But that's something that happens every fucking day all over the country. It, on, on, the owner of the New England Patriots did it. In fact, he was so brazen, he parked his Rolls Royce in front of the massage parlor in Jupiter, Florida. When they raided it, his Rolls Royce was parked in front of it. And he managed to scot go scot-free. But Deshaun Watson loses a year and a half of his fucking football career, reputation absolutely obliterated. <laughs> and he's looked like a pervert. Pervert? Are you kidding? So what does that make every person in that industry? Are they perverts too? This might not be the greatest topic, so I'm gonna move on. <laughs> we gotta leave it alone. But I, I ask those questions because people don't like the truth. They don't like they don't like truth in, in, in shit. So let's jump in right now, because uh, yeah, two was my guy. Deshaun Watson is yours, and um, we're gonna rant real fast, and I'm gonna rant as quickly as I can because this is Rudy's right. rant, and time for me to lose my fucking mind. Jamal Murray, bro. Oh, Lord. I know I talked about it a second ago, and this is just part one because there's actually uh, three parts to this. And I want your response, actually. Jamal Murray's throwing shit on the court, gets a fine of $100,000. The man makes $50 million a year. He could have injured somebody. Something bad could have happened. We throw fans out of the building for throwing shit on the floor. How in the world do we have a lower standard from the players on the bench? What is going on? That he can do that, not even get so much as a technical foul called on him in the game, not ejected from the game. He should have been ejected. Not a technical, he should have been ejected. And I don't want to hear, oh, he doesn't have a history of doing bad shit. I don't care. I do not care. Because if someone had rolled their ankle and gotten badly hurt, that and from the, primarily from Minnesota, because if it happened in Denver, he'd have to answer that in his own locker room. But if it happened to someone from Minnesota, like like Ant or Cat or one of them big time dudes, obviously Gobert wasn't there to get hurt. So, you know, he's the biggest time of them all. I'm kidding. Um, but if one of those big time dudes gets hurt, that drastically, dramatically Im impacts that series and the chances for the T-Wolves to win a championship. I think it's despicable. It disgusts me. And I don't care if, he held, if he's holding himself accountable now. I don't give a fuck. Did he hold himself accountable when he did it? No, he did not. He hid. He threw a towel that actually went right at the feet of a referee on the baseline. And then he threw the freaking heat pad, which ended up in the freaking key of the, of the game. And it was hit. Luckily, no one got hurt. But we're sitting here uh, uh, accepting this. This is a problem that I have with Adam Silver as a commissioner. He's an absolute fucking pussy of a commissioner. God damn. Kisses players' asses. Oh, Lord. David Stern would have suspended him. Absolutely. For at least a game. I think she's suspended for the duration of the series. God I don't damn. even care anymore. What's wrong? That's, I'm just saying, you're harsh. I think he should be suspended for the series. If Draymond Reed did that, he'd be out for the remainder of the playoffs. But Draymond has a history. But again, why. I don't care he about would, history he, he because would, this is about he, injuring no, somebody. But Draymond would get suspended because of his history, not because he did well, it on the first time. I, 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 again, no, you should be suspended on the first time. You're throwing something on the court. I'm, I'm just saying, that's why Draymond would be suspended for the series, though. What's, not... what's, what's the next thing? Let me take that same bag and throw it high in the air and hit someone in the head with it on the court. Like, what are we talking about? If a fan can be ejected after paying money to be in the building, well, you know what? Next game I go to, I want to throw shit at players from the team. Because you know what? I'm pissed off that we're losing because he can't win home games. 
So I'm going to throw shit at, this, at Jason Tatum's head and say, well, Jamal Murray did it in a game, so why the fuck are you throwing, why are you throwing me out? I'm sorry, why are you arresting me for this? Because you should be arrested for that. That's a crime. If he had hit someone in the head with this shit, he could go to jail for it. It's not part of the game. And I'm not saying you should arrest him, but if I did it in the stands, I'm getting locked up. You're getting locked up. Like, we're not going to leave the arena free of handcuffs. And it's really frustrating because this MB the NBA does this nonsense with these players and they preach all this safety. Your player created as unsafe a possible environment as, is, as there is because he was getting his ass torched for no other reason other than he was frustrated. I was frustrated coaching an AAU team, slam a pedal on the ground, it snaps in half, and it skids out to midcourt, and I get a technical foul, and the referee looks at me like, what the fuck are you doing? He's getting locked I said, up. He's getting locked huh? up. Sim he's simply getting locked up. Akon, locked up. Won't oh, let by, me the, out. By, by the T-Wolves. Like Akon, locked up. Yeah. Won't let me out. But he, he yeah. really need to be on his T-Grizzly stuff and be on his first day out because he got to get out of jail because it's been locked up the whole series. So he has to get out, that shit out of his fucking mind, figure out a way. I know his calf is bothering him, but you weren't, it wasn't bothering you when you were hitting the game winners against the Lakers. And well, he, also, he had Austin Reeves guarding him. Yeah. And Anthony Davis playing six feet away from him. <laughs> like, well, he couldn't, he couldn't move his feet fast enough like that to, to get I, to him. I, I, I tell you what, I think that the T-Wolves should, should uh, have receipts. And as soon as they can, they should. I don't know. No, they can't. Go go 1990s basketball. And mistakenly, you know, by accident, land a fucking knee to the back of his calf. Wow. Or... Karate chop his ass. Wow. I, 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 how else do you deal with shit anymore now? At least in hockey, you get to watch these guys kick the shit at each other. Boston was down 4-1. Start a brawl. The Panthers score again. It's 5-1. They start another brawl. Panthers score again. 6-1. Another brawl. These were three brawls inside of the last 12 minutes of the game. They deal with it themselves. They deal with it. Let's oh. go back to the days where Robert Parrish can freaking karate chop Bill Lambeer and not even get a technical foul call on him. And keep playing. Let's go back to that. Because mm -hmm. Jamal Murray deserves a receipt. He deserves a receipt. And what he did was as dirty as it... If that happened in a high school game, Nick, what happens? You don't play in the rest of your career. You don't, I mean, you're, 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 Your, your yeah. season in high school is over. Yeah. But it's, it's over. But what else might happen? There might be a brawl. Yeah. From fans coming up. From fans, but, because but, they have access to the court. Yeah, they don't have the security like, that they don't. The NBA security's not there. If that happened in a high school game, there's a brawl, and that kid who did that is not playing the rest of the season. And it doesn't matter if it's you, Peacock, <clears throat> Marcus Allen this year, any one of the stars from Northern High School, or Cooper Flag from Montverde, they're not playing again. But we're allowing a guy to get a hundred thousand dollar fine, bro. He should have been fined ten million dollars if you're not going to suspend him. God damn. It sounds fucked up, but he makes fifty million. God damn, Rudy. James Harden spends a hundred k at the strip club in a night. Come on. Man. All right. That's part one. Okay. Part two. Patrick Beverly, you royal sack of shit. Yeah, Pat Beverly, Pat Mitten, Glove, whatever the fuck Nick likes to call you. Patrick Beverly is. Worse than Draymond Green. Worse. Because he acts like he thinks he's some upstanding guy. He has this, uh, I was wrong. He throws a... Are you there, Nick? Did you disappear on me? I'm talking to myself now. So, he throws a ball in the stands at, uh, at Indiana, and he hits a woman on the head with the ball. Acts like he's so apologetic about it, the, the fan next to her throws the ball, tosses it back to him, and he immediately throws a bullet pass right back at him that nearly hits another female next to the, the guy. He is a piece of work. And then he follows up with a post-game press conference in the locker room after they lose and refuses to talk to an ESPN producer because she didn't she wasn't subscribed his podcast so in the span of the game i don't know if you heard anything i said yeah. but in the span of the game 
And he, you know, so he doesn't, she, he doesn't speak to the woman because of his podcast. He says, I'm not, you're not subscribed. Well, number one, that is completely ridiculous. He, and then he pushes her microphone away. Then he does this fake apology tour on his fucking podcast. You know that he's being investigated right now by the Milwaukee, by the Indiana police, Indianapolis police. They're like looking at potentially charging him with a, with a battery. He oh, threw a ball oh, at the oh, lady yeah. in the face, bro. Yeah, yeah. The first ball he threw at the lady hit her in the face. That wasn't even the person that he was trying to hit. That's what makes it so stupid. He hit the wrong person in the face, a woman, who probably spent $3,000 for them tickets. They're right behind the bench. The guy throws him the ball back. He, he soft tosses it. And then Beverly throws a bullet pass and hits the lady <laughs> next to him. Another lady. Give me one. Like, what is, like, bro, he's 36 years old. I, I don't want to hear these adult men who have no ability to control themselves. Like, you have zero... I, I, I mean, it, it's like you did you did you grow up in a in a doghouse, or did you grow up with, with people to teach you to behave? Because it's becoming absolutely ridiculous watching a professional athlete get pissy and whiny and moany about what they said was they said Cancun in Cancun on three. Now he claims that that's not what was said, bro. I don't care what was said. You are a professional, bro. You're a basketball player making millions of dollars and largely to suck, realistically, because you've been on like 30 fucking teams in the 10 years. But, and pe people get tired of you so fast they get rid of you. But the fact of the matter is, he does this shit constantly. He has an attitude issue constantly. And now he's assaulting. Imagine if a, if a fan did what he did. If that fan, if that male fan had thrown the ball his face like that, would that be all right? No. He'd be going to jail. He'd be thrown out of the building going to jail. He'd be arrested on the spot. Patrick Beverly gets to do it and nothing happens. And then he gets to do the other bullshit in the locker room and act like an asshole to a, to a, to a producer because they haven't, they haven't uh, you know, subscribed to your podcast. He didn't ask the men that question. And I'm not saying it was a sexist thing at all because I don't believe it was sexist at all. I think he was just, he, I just think he's a dick, realistically. And Rudy. I think he probably knows most of those guys that were there. I, I, I'm not sure. Rudy. Yeah. If that ball hit me. Oh. You might be fighting. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I'm, I'm in pain. I'm, I'm busted oh. up. I got a broken nose. I got a concussion. Even though it was a softball. It was a softball. The first it one don't was... matter. She wasn't looking. She oh. wasn't looking. The girl that got hit initially wasn't looking. Oh. So if it hits you when you're not looking, it hurts a whole lot more than if you're looking. Oh, my and neck. I, well, she should. Oh. And she should sue him, number one. She should press charges, number two. The man should press charges as well. They should all press charges against him. I would. I don't give a shit anymore. I'm tired I'm tired of these professional athletes acting like divas and crying about how they're being so abused by fans. Bro, you have no idea what abuse from fans is because the league has become fucking embarrassingly soft where they kick a fan out for taunting and, and heckling. And you can't take it. You're marshmallows. So he jumped on his podcast and said he was wrong. He apologized, Bobby. I don't care. I don't, I don't care. He should be suspended for half the season next year if he's on someone's team. And, in fact, the suspension should be drawn before someone is stupid enough to give him a contract. Suspend him for what? Nobody's picking him for up. What? Next year. I don't think for what? I think he's done. Well, he, you know what? You know how you guarantee him being done? You suspend him for half the season. No one will take him because he can't actually play until he serves out a 40, 41 game suspension. Yeah, it's I suspend him for half the season. Because yeah, if cool. you can go and assault fans, throwing balls at them, like, I'm sorry, you can't do that. What are we doing? Because when the fan threw a fucking empty cup in Detroit for the Malice in the Palace, you saw what happened. Yeah, I'm, 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 sick, of, I'm sick of these players not dealing with fans and they're crying. <clears throat> oh, the, the fan said I'm a bitch or I'm a, I'm a pussy. Or, You're a bitch. Or, yeah, you or, are. Or they talked about my family or things like that. Oh, God. Get the fuck over it, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, NBA players, NFL players. Oh, I'm going to have a feeling that, man, y'all know these fans are just fucking fans. They don't even make the money you make for the most fucking part. They just out there talking shit to get under your skin. If you can't have the tough skin enough to fucking not pay attention to that, you're not, you shouldn't be playing, man. It's, it was fans. I played I play professional ball, man. And there's fans heckling this and talking shit to me the whole time. And by the middle of the game, because I don't give them what they fucking do, what they want for me to give them, they start liking me and start and start having fun with me rather than 
heckling me because they'd be like, damn, I'm not getting on the next skin, man. I'm not getting on the, they call me Taylor. Oh, Taylor, fuck you. Your mom's not shit. <laughs> and I'd be like, and I just embrace it most times. I'd be like, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're, and, and that's how I handle fans. I don't, because it's at the end of the day, it's fucking words, man. Y'all act like these words from people that's in the stands is bothering y'all that fucking much. Oh, your 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 wife's a pussy. I gotta go defend my wife. You really don't. I'm it's 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 cute on the on the face of it. Oh wife, I was defending you. But then the day you look fucking stupid. You look fucking stupid. Messing with these fans that's our fucking fans. They're just here to heckle you. That's their fucking job. They they supposed to say the meanest shit, coolest shit to get under your skin. And ninety nine percent of the times it's working nowadays because y'all are so fucking soft with it. It's okay, man. Enjoy it, man. Talk shit back. Call the fan another pussy. Call him a bitch. Talk. I always say that's why your grandma ain't shit. That's my line. Or I say a little bit worse than that, but I don't want to say it right here online. But I was I, I go a little off the deep end with it because if you're gonna give it to me, I know how to give it back without taking it so seriously but these players are so fucking soft that they just oh my gosh get them out the game take them home I'm like it's not that serious man enjoy it now if they touch you or something like that punch them back i don't care like <laughs> you know if they throw something that you throw something back at them that's self-defense I'm like or not you know but the talking that's that's not enough to go over the board with it man it's just come on players man y'all better than that man Cancun, one, two, three, Cancun. Yeah, you're right. I am going to Cancun. We are losing. And I'm going to go spend a million out there and I'm going to have the time of my life because I can't. And that's only fucking one fifth of my fucking contract. I'm good. Or one tenth, one twentieth of my contract. Please. What are we worrying about here, guys? Shut the fuck up. Stop crying like it, little bitches. So, yeah, I agree with you. And, and that's how I feel about it. And that's what fans were. That's why home court used to. Advantage used to actually that's exist. What it meant. That's it. it doesn't exist anymore. In most of these teams, like yeah. back when we, when we, I was a kid, like teams at home would usually good. The good teams at home, you were scared to go be, there. Would be thirty-five and six at home. Like you did not win in their building. They're throwing you just eggs. Didn't. They're throwing eggs at your bus when you're leaving. Yeah, <laughs> <They're>... you <laughs> did not win. Like it was petrifying. The Miami Heat were forty-six and thirty-six. They were twenty-two and nineteen at home. And twenty four and seventeen on the road. Miami. The only play. team in the only well, but the only team in the league in the league that finished with more than thirty five home wins was Boston, which has a real home court advantage because their fans are vile and racist. And I love it. And I love it. And and I, don't, I don't. I don't care. Not, I, I don't I'm care. A, I, I am not a fan of the racial slurs. I don't think they should be doing that. Yeah, but and I don't. I, think I that, wouldn't that's, care. But <laughs> who, if they do it, who gives a shit? You know what, Chad? You fucking. You know how you fix it? You beat Win. their ass and shut. You the beat them on their home court and say, "Take." Beat your... them on their home court, and you know what? You should go back and forth with them the whole damn game. The whole game. The whole game. Do it because you know what? It shows one you're interacting with them, and they're like, "Man, this is I'm being an asshole, and this guy's actually talking to me." But but on top of that, it's like, what? Why does it bother you so much? Why? Like I got. We have a fucking 583 subscriber podcast right now. How many times have I been have I been called bald and fat in comments by people I don't know? A lot. A lot. I'm called first of all, I'm only 255, 260 pounds and I'm 5'10. <laughs> so I'm not exactly obese fat. I'm a bigger guy, but I I mean, I've been 225, 230 and I'm not a fucking lard ass. I'm bald. And so are half of the men in America now. Like, it's a thing. Like, people shave their heads now. This isn't the 1990s where it was Aryan Nation shit. But what do we talk? Like, I've been called fat and bald by so many people on our on our posts that it's laughable. I've been done, it's been done by old ladies. <laughs> I had a 75-year-old woman that's called me bald and fat. I'm like, Jesus. I And I thought this was just reserved for f- fucking pathetic men who, who want to call people names. Like, I don't need to call you a name. I don't care. And you know what? Keep calling into me and keep commenting and keep clicking and keep liking and keep Rudy, sharing. Rudy and you're give, doing what I love. Rudy's going to give you a 10-page paragraph and tell you why. You and should. I'll respond and I'll freaking, I'll go back and forth with you. I've got no problem with it. But I'm sitting here in a, and we only have 600 subscribers yet. And I got fucking people call me bald and fat left and right. But and he's fucking, and I'm not making $100 million to, to do this. We're not making $100 million bucks. These players are getting paid fucking boatloads of money and they cry when everyone calls them a name. They were tougher playing at the park. 
Like the shit that goes on at the park would break these pussies <laughs> if they can't take it in an NBA arena. It's embarrassing. So that's my second part. Patrick Beverly should be Patrick Beverly should be suspended. I don't want to see his ass no more because I'm tired of his ass. I'm sick of it. The last one here. And we talked, we, this is, I'm, I'm not saying this for closing. Gilbert Arenas recently made a comment in the last couple of days about Rudy Gobert. And he said that Rudy Gobert should have skipped his child's birth, left his child, his newborn first child, and flown to Denver and played. The baby was born that morning. I don't know what time. It could have been midnight. It could have been 4 a.m. It could have been 10 a.m. It could have been 11.59. I don't know, and I don't really care. Because, and I think it was really telling about guys like him, Brandon Jennings, and these other guys on his podcast, that they all think that way. If your significant other, I don't know if people, men know, but childbirth is a very, very serious thing. And black women primarily in America die at a higher rate giving birth to children than any race there is and you think it's okay to leave your wife or girlfriend or mother of your kid even if y'all not together anymore when your child is born the day that day that is still the most dangerous day because you can actually come out of pregnancy okay and eight or ten hours later have complications that kill you so when I hear these guys say, oh, they could have left, they even invited Mark Jackson onto their podcast today and, and the whole nine and Kenyon Martin was on there and he was trying to justify times and stuff and, and all that shit. But Kenyon Martin, you know, he's different generation. And this is the thing, this is also generational. These players today take days off to take a leak. Andrew Wiggins missed three months last year because of personal issues that no one ever know, has any idea about. The rumors, it. the rumors were that it was his his girlfriend or wife's. All his kids weren't his. Then there's a rumor that it was his father was sick. Mm -hmm. That you know, but you know what? You're a multimillionaire. How about you put your father on a fucking plane and move him to Golden State, Oakland, San Fran, put him in a hospital there, so you can do your damn job for three months. So you get to take three months off because your dad is sick. If that's what it was. But Rudy Gobert can't take a game off because his ha he's having his first child in another state. Well, I don't think you should throw two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. That. Two weeks ago. Oh, I can give you a Al Harford missed a game for the birth of his child in 2016. A, 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 a lot of people do. Rajon Rondo skipped a game for his motherfucking birthday. His birthday. Damian Lillard missed the game this year for personal reasons. I don't care what they were. Jimmy Butler. A lot of people. Jimmy missed. Butler missed four games this year for the death of a family member. I don't know where you live. I know where I live. Person dies. Person is put in a damn freaking um, funeral home within two days. And like in the next day, they're buried. Usually within a week, they're buried. Jimmy Butler missed three weeks. He played. He missed. He missed four games. Over the course of two and a half weeks. Who the hell died? God bless. I don't care who died. He missed four weeks and no one says a word. Why are you missing that many games? You can miss a game. Oh, uh, two games. He missed four. One of which we lost by four points to Boston. And that was the difference of us being, uh, I don't know, a fucking six seed. So I'm not trying to be heartless. But what we have here is we have a real weird justification on topics and missing games. Butler missing games. Damian Lillard misses games. Rajon Rondo takes a day off for his birthday. Like, Andrew Wiggins missed games last year. He missed this year. He missed four games this year for another personal issue. Remember Kyle Lowry missed a whole, like, a month because of personal issues two years ago? Like, I there was a player that I saw that missed a World Cup game for the birth of his child. He flew across the world to see his baby born and then flew back. But he missed a World Cup game. The World Cup is once every four years, bro. So that's the national team. And we're going to sit here and we're going to fucking get on Rudy Gobert? Uh, if you told me this 20 fucking years ago. And here, here's my thing. I'm going to sound like a hypocrite. I don't think they should miss games at all. But if we're going to go in one direction, for one thing, you go all the way. You can't... You can't 
weigh what's more important? What's the worst personal reason? We can't, what are we weighing? And Gilbert Reese makes a joke of it. it I, I don't know what type of father he is. I know he goes to his kids' basketball games beyond that. I don't know if he even raises his kids. I have no idea. I don't care. He doesn't seem like he's probably the greatest one. None of my business. I don't give a shit. But listening to what they, those guys are saying, their priorities, they won the game. And they're saying that, I think one of them said that they're, they heard that there's issues in the locker room, that they have a problem with it. Well, let me tell you about something where, um, how, how can you have issues in the locker room where I believe it was Mike Conley missed games for personal reasons? I could have swore I saw Mike Conley missing games for personal reasons. I I, I don't understand. Like we are we gonna like what what where are we where are we going? Because I know I saw it. Uh, it. It's just weird. It's it's just we we are. At the, at the end of the day, I, I'm if, tired of it. Like leave this if, guy alone. Like you want to clown him, clown him. It's Rudy, but, it's Rudy Gobert. He's a puncher bag. But end of the day, it's what's important to him and a lot of a lot of people. Man, it's. If that's what it is, especially when it's your first child, it's 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 so much more important with your wife. It's, they go through so much. It's not so much of the baby. The baby really don't even – the baby can't even see past eight inches or something like that. They don't even know that. They can't even see you. They can feel you and things of that nature when they get to you. But it's more – Mike Conley missed a playoff game for the birth of his child. Yeah. So it's 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 more. So how could their, how could their locker room have an issue with him yeah. when one of their players missed when he was playing um in Memphis? How could he have an issue with this man? I don't think he is, yeah. but he missed the playoff game for the yeah. birth of his kid. So it's 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 just more that it's Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert is a punching bag for for a lot of jokes and things of that nature. It started with Shaq, and it went it trickled down to to a whole bunch of things that went on with the Draymond situation and. The whole COVID, a lot of shit happened with Rudy Gobert. So, you know, being there for your kid, it's, it's, it's a big thing. It's, it's not even for the kid per se. It's for your wife, your woman, or the person it's that's your having, woman. It's that's your, having the, 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 your child, your baby mama, your girlfriend, whoever it was that's having your child. It's really about being there for them because there's so much thing that could go wrong in that situation. Like, just being in that situation. I know you've been there. I've been there in my my fiance had a fucking C session that happened like out of nowhere because, you know, of you can die from that. Because the the, the, the kid wasn't it's handling No, the kid wasn't handling the, the, the um pushing was, or whatever. Yeah, it wasn't having it wasn't, ha- it wasn't having handling the contraction well. So he wasn't handling the contraction well. So his heartbeat was dropping. Yeah, that's so, C section. So they pulled her out out of nowhere, like, oh we gotta do it quick fast. And by the time they're like, Oh, you gotta change in your clothes. Oh, and then one time I tried to get in the door, they was like, yeah, you can't even go in because we already brought him in. We can't open the door again. So I wasn't even there. And then like three oh. minutes later, my kid was out. So it's really more for the person that you're having a kid with because they go through so much shit as a woman. Like, I'm not even trying to sound like a pussy or shit. It's just what it's it is. A, I understand it. it. It's not a pussy. It, it, it's not like. Now, I, if it's her I, second I, kid and third kid and she had a yeah, kid. This, and, like, if this is your second or third kid, but you know what? And I know people are going to say this. Well, your kid doesn't even know if you're there or not. You know, they don't. But you know what? When they're older, they're going to ask you. They will ask you. It's not even that. It's, 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 My own kids have asked me, where was I when, when they were born? <laughs> like, you're a kid. Like, this isn't a birthday when you, you're a professional athlete. This is the birth. This is the beginning. And no. I don't know how you felt, but I know my first son, Nico. Mm-hmm. I didn't. And then by the way, our kids have literally the same name. <laughs> they're Nick, both Nicholas yeah. and they're both, we go call them Nico. No, mine's Nico. actually Nico. It's just Nico. I thought it was Nicholas. I thought it was Nicholas. Say you. Oh, okay. Well, my son's called Nico. His name is Nicholas, which is the same as Nick up here. Nicholas, just without an H. Um, when I had my son, there, I, there was no way in the world that I even wanted to leave the room. I didn't want to leave the room. You could have told me that I had a million dollars on the opposite side of the room, outside of the door. I, I would have grabbed it. Yeah, but, okay. um, but, no, but, but I would have been right no. back in. No, I, 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 I'd have to have a really fucking good reason. And I'm sorry, a playoff basketball game when you're winning 1-0 on the road, I'm sorry, is not as important of a fucking reason for me to not want to be with my kid on that first day. I'm sorry. You can, say, you can feel how you feel. And you can call me a pussy. Well, 
And I know I'm all over the place with this no. because I have feelings of certain things. I'm tired of watching all these guys take days off for personal reasons that are not really real. Oh, that, oh they're going through a divorce. Well, you know what? So fucking what? No. You're hearing in the morning, go play in the night. That's no. different. If we had a baby early and my and my wife or fiance or my girlfriend was like, hey, it's okay, you know, I understand, yada, yada. No, that's different. I'd be like, okay, let me go make it out there. Most aren't going to be okay with that. And there Most are, there are some that, that's understanding, like, okay, but, but, about, this is the lifestyle like, that you created yeah, for me. DeLon Wright, I know you're going to say DeLon who? DeLon Wright for the Miami Heat, game four of the Heat series. He skipped that game for the birth of his kid. No one said a word. Gilbert Arenas didn't clown him. I know he doesn't have the the magnitude to the to the like to, to what Gobert has to the T-Wolves, but he actually was our only point guard. <laughs> so our only point guard left. We couldn't dribble the ball. We lost by 30. We would only lost by 25 if he played. Um, Maybe. But realistically, like, no one said a word then. But because it's Gobert, let's go fucking take a dump on Gobert. Like, it, 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 it just, it's such bad taste. I don't like it. I think it's disrespectful. I, I think everyone's situation is different. I, I am sick and tired of these mental health days for these players. I, I'm, I'm disgusted by it at, on that level. But the birth of your kid is, you, that only happens once. It will not happen again. That child will only be born one time. Right. And you'll never happen again. And if you miss that, you miss something that you're never going to have again. That said, we are at 90 minutes already. Holy shit. Holy. So let's uh, let's do this real quick. C- Nick is talking some CFL. We are now introducing a CFL segment for our Canadian peoples, as Nick played in the CFL for a decade. Um, jump right in on, on it, Nick. I don't know if you want to do a pick as well or whatever, but definitely yeah. we got to jump on the CFL. Yeah, yeah. We're going to keep it quick. We're going to keep it quick this week, man. Um, the picks this week are um, Friday, we're taking, the, we're taking the Pacers to win at home over the next money line there. Easy. All right. Um, we're also taking the Nuggets to pull it off in Minnesota. We're taking the points for the Nuggets. They're, minus, they're plus 4.5. We're taking the Nuggets to win that game. Um, and then what we're doing, we're actually going to segment this into the CFL. We're going to take plus 200 on Winnipeg Blue Bombers winning the championship later on. This is a, this is a further down the line pick. So the Winnipeg Blue Bombers will be the 2024 Grey Cup champion. And this segments us into CFL brought to you by Nick Taylor. This is the O Canada, O Canada. Power rankings. Early. It's early in the year. The season hasn't got started yet. They just started rookie camp this week. Um, they will start training camp next week. Um, and this is the early power rankings that I got for y'all. Um, should I do nine to one or should I go one to nine? How do you think, Rudy? Nine to one. Nine to one. So I changed this late. This is the Hamilton Tiger Cats will be number nine. Just because of their quarterback situations in flux. Bo Levi Mitchell has not been healthy the past couple few years. He hasn't been there. He's the number one quarterback. They're paying a lot of money. Um, and if he can't be on the field, he was the highest winning percentage quarterback when he was with Calgary Stampeders. And since then, the last couple of years in Calgary and since he joined Hamilton, it hasn't been so good. He just doesn't know how to take the check down. He's been throwing the ball deep into coverage when he shouldn't have. If he, he's, it's been reported that he's in a walking boot right now after being injured last year. If he's not there, he's not playing well and doing what they need to do, we're going to have Hamilton at number nine. At number eight will be the Toronto Argonauts. This is a team that went 16-2 and two last year. Why are they number eight? The quarterback just got a conduct detrimental. He was the MOP, the most valuable player of the league, basically. Offensive player of the year. He has conduct detrimental to the, to the league, to the team, for a whole situation that happened with a trainer, things of that nature. We're not going to dive into that. But he's not there. You have to go. With, yeah. Yeah. Chad Kelly. Who, this is where you dive into it. Wait, who? Chad Kelly, who used to play for Mississippi. Oh, he has a history of crazy shit. He has shit. a history. So, from college and on. So, so yeah, that's and, not shocking. So him and the trainer, supposedly, he even been making inappropriate remarks to her and a little bit of getting oh, it's a her. female. It's a female trainer. Okay. Yes. So she reports okay. it. 
Toronto say, you know, we have no reports of that. That's on our side. They fired him, so they end up firing her. So she sues. Yep, she sues, and the CFL does an investigation. They find out that hey, Chad Kelly has been doing some inappropriate things. We're going to suspend him for the first nine games of eighteen games. At the MOP, after they won sixteen and two games last year, they lost their defensive coordinator, and they also lost a lot of players on defense. They lost their kick returner who broke the record for kick returns in the season. They lost their running back who was a top running back in the league who goes to Sass. Sass. So their backup quarterback who played well a couple of games last year, he's only 25, he has to step up. They don't have great receivers over there. They don't blow you off the field. They they broke the record for sacks by their franchise record last year. So they turned the ball over a lot of times also. So that was a big thing for them. So now we're going to go with number seven, Ottawa Red Blacks. They have Drew Brown. Drew Brown takes over as their quarterback. He's taking over for Mazzoli. Hold on, Rudy. Give me one second. Well, while Nick is away, I think I heard Baby in the background crying. Uh, So I will jump into a comment I have on the Tom Brady roast uh, while while he's away. And then we'll jump right back into uh, the CFL corner. So Tom Brady recently had a roast this past Sunday where a lot of people went in on him. And it was fun and games and cute and all that stuff. I understand the purposes of roasts. And I think they're cute. I also think there's a pro- I think there's certain things that might be cons- I would consider off limits. Now, I know his ex-wife is very upset about things that were said about her primarily. But there was a there was a topic that came up over and over and over again. I'm doing my Tom Brady commentary right now real quick, so I'm going to finish it off. Um and we'll jump right back into the CFL stuff. So, there was a commentary where basically they were hitting on Aaron Hernandez a whole lot. Now, Aaron Hernandez is a convicted murderer. Um, committed suicide by hanging in uh, in prison. He's a horrible human being. But he still has a family. And he still has a child. And he still has an ex-fiance, a fiance who has his child, who's now 11 years old. It's, not, it's hard enough that a child who's 11 has to grow up knowing that her father is a convicted murderer who committed suicide in prison by hanging. It's bad enough when people are on a stage joking about it. I am not cool with that. I think it's despicable. And while I think the overall roast was cute, I didn't think it was all that funny for the most part. Um, I thought Kevin Hart did great. And I thought Gronk was typical Gronk hilarious and the the big oaf <laughs> behavior. He he plays a role so well. I don't even know if he's dumb or not because he plays the dumb role so well. Um and I'd have a hard time being the dumb guy all the time, but he's cool with it, so let him do it. That said, when Julian Edelman made the joke about, you know, Gronk being hung, and then what we know there was something else that was on, another tight end that was a lot more hung, and that was Aaron Hernandez, who hung himself, it, it just is not appropriate. And you have to have some level of giving a shit about people's feelings. And I think that they really missed the ball, the beat, the miss the, the, the ball, or whatever you want to call it on this one. Because there was a point where Jeff Ross made a comment about Robert Kraft going to the massage parlor. And Tom Brady got up and went to Jeff Ross and told him to not do that again. Robert Kraft was there. Robert Kraft's 85 years old. And he told him to not do that again. And everyone could hear it. So you got mad enough about Robert Kraft, but you'd find it okay to make those comments about a guy who's dead. He's dead. Like, it's over. But he still has a child. And people will say that I'm stupid or whatever. I don't care. I think there are certain things that are off limits. You want to joke about his wife and the fact that she got smashed by her jujitsu instructor? Cool. He has to deal with that shit. But you're joking about people who are not even there, who are not on that stage, who can't defend themselves, who can't say anything. And that child has to go to school the next day. And you can bet your ass that people were talking about that at her school. At 11 years of age, I promise to God... I have a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old. These kids know everything that's going on. And I just thought it was a real bad look, bad taste. 
And I think we as a, as humans need to do a little bit better when it comes to subjects and, and roasting and, and, and funny roasts. Keep it, keep it funny. Keep it all that. Keep it about that guy. But, but mention, and, and dude, he got Aaron Hernandez's death and suicide got mentioned probably eight times That's crazy. by everyone up there. That's crazy. And it's so fucked up in my opinion. Like, I don't find that to be cute or cool. Um, but that's all I got. Let's go back into the CFL corner with Nick. You left off at what? Number eight, number seven, number seven. The, number uh, seven. uh, we had number seven, the Ottawa red blacks. Um, this should be a good one with the acquisition of Drew Brown, who came over from Winnipeg with a nine to one touchdown to interception ratio. He played a short time up here for the Winnipeg. He came in to spare um, Zach Caleros, the former MOP for the past two years before um, with just the Toronto quarterback Chad Kelly just won it. He stepped in and he had an eleven yard average. Um, he went over to Ottawa in a trade. Um, they also added Dominique touchdown rhymes over there. Um, can they connection get there fast enough? Can it be a T-Mobile connection, AT and T connection? Do they hit the ground running? Um, their defense was terrible in the secondary last year. They gave up big plays after big plays. Can they stop big plays? And can that change their season this year to go forward and farther than they went before? They lost Devonte Williams um, to injury to Achilles as a running back, dynamic player to start the season. That's going to be devastating. How can they overcome that? They're at number seven. At number six, we're going to go with the Edmonton Eskimos. I mean, I'm sorry. I apologize. The Edmonton Elks, my former team. Um, they bring back McLeod Bethel. They're not the Eskimos, they're not the Eskimos no, anymore? they changed the name. They changed the name a couple of years ago. Yep. Oh, because of uh, the yep. whole situation went on. Um, McLeod Bethel's MBT, McLeod Bethel Thompson. Last time we seen him in the CFL, is with Toronto. Um, threw for 23 touchdowns and 15 interceptions. They brought him back to the team after sitting out from Canada from a year. He went to the USFL. But what happened with Edmonton last year, they got on the roll with their backup quarterback after they started off 0-9 and they were putrid. Nobody cared about them. They were the laughing stocks of the league. Trey Ford comes in. He looks like Michael Vick on freaking steroids. Nobody could tackle this guy. He could throw the ball. He can't make quick reads. He can't make reads and things of that nature. But Lord have mercy, their RPO game went Insane. Their running back, Kevin Brown, benefited so much from it. He ran for 1,100 yards. Um, and they decided to go get MBT um, and bring, and be their quarterback because they want more of a quarterback who will throw the ball down the field because they have receivers who make it $300,000 in Eugene Lewis. And they have Kyron Moore. They added Curly Gittin. And they have Dylan Mitchell. So they have a great group of receivers. For, for, for perspective, 300000 in, in in Canadian football that's is a very high paid that's player. That's the highest paid receiver in the league. So when you have the highest paid receiver in the league, you want to throw the ball to him as much as possible. So you go get a quarterback who's going to be a gunslinger. Now, MBT, he will throw the ball. He might throw the ball to the other team a lot, but he will throw the ball a lot. So that's why I have them at six. Their defense isn't so good. But Chris Jones is known for defense, but he hasn't got them playing good defense. They run basically elementary defense in the back end of their defense. And they're missing their top sacks player, um, the sack person from last year in A.C. Leonard. At number five, we have the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Trevor Harris is getting a little older. He had a knee injury last year. They started off 3-1 and one last year. They looked like a team that could contend. When he got hurt, all went to hell. They started off with 3-1, and one, but were they 3-1 and one because they played the Edmonton Elks, who were freaking terrible to start the season, and they got two of their three wins against them, or were they just a good team? We don't know. They ended up the season at 6-12, and 12, missed the playoffs, but they're coming back with a new coach, Corey Mace from Toronto, who led the league in sacks last year. Um... They force a lot of turnovers. He has a great blitz and sink scheme that goes on. We're looking for Sass to be one of the top teams this year. Coming back this year, being right around the middle ground. At number four, people are going to say, hey, Nick, you're going with Calgary because you played for them last year. No, I'm going with Calgary because they come back with Malik Henry as a receiver. They come back with Reggie Bagleton. They come back with... Um, Clark Barnes, they come back with Tyson Philpott, a great receiver group. They got DJ Mills at running back. 
and they have the top leading DB with interceptions last year in Demary Houston. Is that enough for a change? It all depends on the quarterback. Can Jake Myers be more consistent this year at quarterback? Can he be more than 19 to 15 in interception, touchdown interception ratio? Can they run the ball a lot more this year? Last year, Calgary Palmer was not running the ball enough. They put the ball into their quarterback hands, and then they have the receivers to go along with it because two of their top receivers were out. So that's why Calgary's at four, because I'm looking for them to have a bigger, better year with Jake Myers stepping up and throwing the ball a little bit more. If he doesn't, Matthew Schultz, the backup quarterback, is well enough to step up and be that guy. At number three, we have the defender champion, the Montreal Alouettes. They got hot the second half of the season. They brought in, they brought in the backup, not the backup, but the the, the um, second place winner in the defensive player of the year award the year before, who got released at the start of camp. He came in and made a big change for their defense. Started he had nine sacks in thirteen games, um, forced fumbles, two interceptions. Then they also brought in Darnell Sankey, but. This year, he, the, um, there's a little bit of changes. The DN, who made all the big plays for them, will not be there this year. He retired. They say because of the gambling thing and whatnot, but he retired before that even came out, so they lose him. And Cody Fajardo, he proved to be a big-time quarterback in big games. He stepped up. Um, they played Winnipeg in the championship, and he made two big throws, a third and five. He made a throw down the left side of the field to his guy for a bomb, and then he throws on a zero coverage against Winnipeg, a post route to, to um, the other field pot twin, and they win the game. Can Cody Fajardo step up the next year and be that quarterback again to lead their, guy, their team? They lose their running back. William stand back. He goes to BC. He's a bruiser. Who's going to step up? Is it Antwi? Is it Fletcher? Who knows? We'll see this year. But their defense in the last eight games of the season gave up 15 points per game. Outstanding. They made, they made Toronto turn the ball over seven times in the game to go to the championship, and that's what led them there. At number two, we got the BC Lions, arguably the top receiver and crew going on for another year. They got Hollins. They got Hatcher. They got Katoy, and they got six foot six McKinnis. They have a great group of receivers. They're one downfall. They can't beat Winnipeg in Winnipeg when it counts. The past two years, they lost in Winnipeg in the West Finals. Can their quarterback lead them this year? We'll see. Vernon Adams threw for, threw for close to 5,000 yards last year, 31 touchdowns, 18 interceptions. His problem is interceptions. He had one game where he threw six interceptions in the game. Can he step up this year with the running game that they needed? They added. They added William Stanback from Montreal, a champion, a bruiser. He's only 29 years old, averaged 5.5 yards a carry, coming back from the injury from the year before. He was a top five player in the CFL. Does he change their game? Is did they add a running back who could carry them when it's snowing, when the weather is bad? Is he changed it for them. They need a running back. They need somebody who can run the ball. At the top spot, man, we go to Winnipeg, man. The past four years, this team has won 75% of their games. 75% of their games. Two championships. Went to four. They lost two championships by a total of five points. Last play of the game of each championship that they're, you know, they gave up a, they missed the, they got a field goal block and they gave up a touchdown up four. Why did they lose the, the last championship, Nick? The last championship? Yeah. Why did they lose the last championship? They lost the last two. I'm not the last gonna... two? They lost the last two? Yeah, I was hurt. The, I was hurt the year, the, the third one. year. The third one. Well, the first championship that they lost, because I know you won two in a row. What was the, why did they lose the third one? It was, we had a couple injuries on the team, and we made a couple mistakes in the championship <laughs> game. That we normally don't make. It, it, it's okay. You're retired. You can say it's because I, I got injured and I couldn't play. I got injured and I couldn't fucking play. I'm going to say it. Damn it. I was a big part of that defense. I don't get the respect that I deserve in, that, in the league. And I'm going to say it right now. Um, 
I was a big part of that defense, especially on the field side. I'm the captain. I'm uncle. I, I, I make the shit roll. I call the plays. I call it out before it happens. I get my, my team. I get my field corner in line. I get my, my Sam in line. I talk to my safety, and it's a great connection. I talk to my defensive end. It's just a connection that we have. Um, I'm the voice out there. Um, I don't like to brag about it because, you know, who does? But I was instrumental, instrumental to their team, and when I blew my Achilles that year, after having three interceptions in the first four games, having an all-star season, it was a big blow for us just from a leadership veteran standpoint. I'm not going to say my game, even though my game was pretty good, but more of my vocal, my leadership. We missed out on that, and we ended up losing that year. We, maybe I play and we still lose, but shit, the past three years that I played in Winnipeg, we only lost four games in the game, three games in, the, in, in, in 35 games that I played in. So maybe me, maybe not, but I was a big part of what went on there. And the next year they come back and they lose again. It, it's get, okay. You can toot your own horn. I mean, you do think the 2006 Vikings are the best uh, Northern State champions. So, so, I mean. so, like I said, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are the team to be still. The past four years, 75% of the games they won. And I'm going to say about three of those games, their starting quarterback didn't play. So when he plays, they probably win about 85% of their games when he does play. Zach Caleros, the two-time MOP, while he'd been over, in there, over there in Winnipeg, um, he won the two years before the previous year with Chad Kelly just won. Um, Winnipeg is still at the top of the ranking. You you got to beat the champs to be the champs. Even though y'all beat them in the championship the past two years, they're still the top of the, the top of the league, the top of the food barrel, the, the top of the food chain. They are there. They are the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. They're still at the top. So, All right. So I don't know much about CFL football other than Nick played, and I watched him play a lot of times as much as I could when they'd show it um, down here because they didn't show it only on TSN and. They don't always have TSN down here. I have to find a way to get that channel. Yeah, ESPN too, a couple of times. ESPN would show it once in a while. They would show the championship game and what have you. No, some of the playoff it's a games. games. It's, it's games there. There was a few. There was a few. There was a few. But I don't tell y'all when I'm not playing. So. But I, I don't know. I, I like that's why I didn't speak because I really don't know shit about the CFL other than he played. And I did think that three hundred thousand was a high salary there. That's why I asked that question. Um, and I do know that Nick was did, didn't play in that last, that championship game, and and that's why they lost. So hey, toot your own horn. It's okay. Toot, toot. Um, <clears throat> two, two. So I'm sorry, I've been coughing. I, my my wife, who's uh, nine months pregnant, um, she has a cold, and she has given this cold to me that I feel that's coming on, and that's why I've been coughing a little bit too much. So I apologize for that. We have a couple things left. I'm gonna we're gonna skip combat corner tonight because I'll do that on a separate recording because yeah. it's really just a, a couple things that I want to say about it, and I'd rather not waste the time. I took care of my rope, my commentary on the closing. Let's talk about the WNBA real fast. WNBA started off last week with the preseason. Um, you know, we went going back and forth on this. Caitlin Clark had 21 points in her first game in the WNBA and shook a bunch of people defending her on their ass and hit threes, just like she did in college. Um, something that's very easily, in my opinion, transferable to the profession to, to, the, to the WNBA. Everyone's been pumping and hyping the whole nine, and uh, the Fever played in Dallas in a 7,000 seat arena in a preseason last week. And they put 6,200 people in there. They couldn't fill up a 7,000 seat arena. Yesterday, the Chicago Sky played the New York Liberty. The New York Liberty or have Sabrina Ionescu, they have Brianna Stewart, <clears throat> they have um, John claude Jones, She's a former MVP as well. I think Brianna Stewart's also been an MVP of the WNBA. I think she's a reigning, reigning MVP of the league. And they went to the WNBA finals. They lost. In, in, they lost to the, the Aces. But they're a very, very good team. And they got beat by the Sky by like 50. <laughs> and, of course, Angel Reese is on the Sky. And she had 13 points, five rebounds. She hit five layups. Made it, good, good for her. That game had 3,132 people at it. Nick and I are going back and forth in our private conversations, and I'm sitting here saying, it's the preseason. Who cares? I don't care that Caitlin Clark had 21 points. I don't care that Angel Reese had 13 points and five rebounds. The New York Liberty starters played 20 minutes or less. They couldn't care less about playing that game, in my opinion. I mean, Jimmy Butler didn't play a preseason game for the Heat all season, this year for six games. So um, why are we acting like these games matter? 
uh, Dallas had their starting five on the floor against Indiana in the final seconds where I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Arike, uh, 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 whatever her last, Ogu, not yeah. even trying. Yep, please. She hits, a, she hits a shot with about three seconds to go, I think, to give them the win or something like that, a couple seconds to give them a win. She's a starter. They're playing starters in the final minute of a preseason game, the first one. I know they only have two. But we're, we, we, we're really making, like, and then the, the stuff that's been coming across my timeline <clears throat> about racism and, well, they didn't play, you know, Angel Reese on TV. They played Caitlin Clark. And, and uh, you know, there was someone that was recording from a, did a live stream on Twitter or X or whatever it is. And there were hundreds of thousands of people liking it and watching it. And so they, did you know they had WNBA League Pass? I didn't know that. I didn't even know it existed. Somebody so they decided. They it. Yeah. Somebody on Facebook they, was like. They put it on WNBA League Pass. Did you watch it? No. No, I didn't watch it either. I don't think people are going to download an app to go watch a game and they have to pay for in the preseason. Uh, I don't know if it was free or if it was for pay, but there's a paywall. So maybe it was free. But let's look at the reality. 3,132 or 62 people were at this game. 3,000 people. It's the preseason, Rudy. And it, okay, again, Nick takes on the position that it's the preseason when it's attendance, but not the preseason because Angel Reese had 13 and 5. No, uh, but Preseason is preseason. The <laughs> effort levels in the preseason from veterans – are not the, who are, who are starters so, so are not the same level of effort that a rookie or someone trying to make a team is. So you tell me that nobody. So now face. I thought Angel Reese was drawing eyes. The Chicago Sky playing a ten thousand seat arena in down just south just south of downtown Chicago, ten thousand seats. They sold thirty one hundred tickets, and people are going to sit here and tell me that we got something going on. Look, I, I would love to see these ladies Sorry. be successful. But the 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 fake level of of it's fake. bother and it's racist because Angel Reese wasn't on, but Caitlin Clark was. Who cares? It's the preseason. Like like it, it's <clears throat> it's the preseason. And I know that Caitlin Clark's opener on the 14th is gonna be packed, and I know their the tickets are a fortune, and I know it'll be on TV, and I know people will watch it. But if you put it behind a paywall on WNBA app, League Pass, nobody will watch it. So so my thing is, we said um, Caitlin Clark was the first pick. That's why mm -hmm. they can know they knew where she was going. Angel Reese was the seventh pick. They didn't know. And the she... second pick on that team. Yes. So the second pick, nobody talks about that. We don't the third pick, the fourth pick, Cardoso, fifth pick. See, nobody talks about Cardoso it. was third, I think. And oh, then was, was, Cameron, was, was Cameron Brink second? I think Cameron was second. Like, that's the thing. We don't even know. We don't even remember because it's, like, insignificant. The only one that mattered was the first and the seventh. Angel Reese does have fans. She has her Barbie doll fans. She has the African-American fans. She has some fans. She has a nice amount of following going on. So, not enough for more than three thousand fans at the arena. Not enough, but I am. I am. They could play fucking Northwestern State University Division One AAA uh, NAIA at LSU and put sixteen thousand people in there, but they can't put three thousand people in an eight million metro area. I am happy for her though that she's that she's actually her hustle and grit is still working in the. No, that's what her. That's always was. That's gonna be her thing. I didn't know if it was gonna trans translate to this to the WNBA with bigger, stronger, faster players, but we'll actually really <clears> see <throat> during the regular season. But she did do it against Brianna Stewart. Brianna Stewart's not covering her. John Paul Jones is. Even, though, even though Rudy say that it's nothing, but they, their starters were out there playing the same amount of time. They played that, 18 to 20 minutes, and, just like her. And Angel Reese played that. So they, so I'm Angel Reese sure, was playing, in the, Angel so was playing sure. in the fourth quarter, and they were not. I don't care. I, I, yeah, it's preseason. I don't care. Yeah, so I don't care that I don't care that Clark had twenty one. So we'll see in a week. I don't care. Like, show me when the games matter. In a week, we'll see how, we'll, how what you're doing. And we'll show see, me. We'll see who's if the fans watching. Cares, who really care? Is, is is it fake? Is it fake fandom or not? We'll find out. It's it's fake. I mean, and clearly Nico thinks it's fake too because he's tired of hearing you talk about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> It, 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 I just find it to be, it's just like this fake outrage just drives me crazy. 
it drives me bananas. Like, what are we, why are we screaming racism? Because like one game wasn't put on TV or I'm sorry, put on league pass. Because the Indiana Fever game was not on TV. It was on League Pass. And it ended up being a great game, I guess. I didn't watch it. <laughs> I saw highlights. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't, like, outwardly searching for them, you know, enough. I wanted them to be successful. But good grief, the <clears throat> the full outrage on Facebook. And, oh, it's the league is racist because they didn't play freaking Angel Reese's game. Okay, what about the other girls that got drafted? What about the the girl from Tennessee that got drafted in the top five? Mm-hmm. What about the girl from UConn that got drafted? Do you even know where she went? I don't even know where what the girl that girl that got called for the. It's bad. I don't remember their name. Aaliyah Edwards. Where where did she get drafted? Where, did we watch her game? No. Why is it only racist when it's Angel Reese? Why is it like? Why does it have to be that way all the time? Hey, it just gets real frustrating. I mean, because here's the reality: if Caitlin Clark did not exist. Nobody would give a shit at all about any of this crap. And we keep fucking trying to avoid the reality. You had a badass white girl who balls and does shit men do. I keep saying it. She does shit men do, does shit that makes you want to watch her, makes me want to watch her, because I don't enjoy watching layup drills. Layup drills. If I want to watch layup drills, I'll go watch my kids' fucking elementary school games. And they'll miss a lot of layups for me, (laughs) just like the WNBA does. Just like women's college basketball does. But give me a, a, a gunner like Caitlin Clark. If there's someone else in college next year that is like her, I will watch her. But this shit where you sit here and you scream about something that does not. Yes, racism exists in the world, but fuck for fuck's sake. Caitlin Clark is the best women's basketball player in college. She made everybody watch that sport, made the WNBA relevant. And yet we're sitting here screaming that Angel Reese's game wasn't on TV. <laughs> Sorry. Like, I hope you enjoyed the 50-point game that the New York Liberty played against them because clearly the New York Liberty didn't give two fucks about that game. I don't think their worst game, they beat, get beat by 50. We're going to see. Hey, the thing is, I'm happy. <clears throat> I, I, I am intrigued. I, I do want to see Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark for the league state because they're getting chartered. They're charter flights now. Oh, they have, they have charter jets now because of who? Caitlin Clark. Because of Caitlin Clark. Because Caitlin Clark said it. So I'm hoping. And when Caitlin Clark said they put $50 million from a broke-ass league into having chartered jets. So I'm hoping. Thank that girl. I'm Thank ho- her. I'm hoping that they can mesh it well. I hope Angel Reese's <clears> game comes along so they can put them together and it could be a rivalry. It really could, could move the league forward. They kind of need it. Hopefully it happens. Angel Reese's game come along. Caitlin Clark keep doing what the hell she does. Um, they need Angel Reese fans to keep coming and supporting and doing things. It'll be good for the game. I'm rooting for them. I, I actually am. I am too. I really, I, I hope they're successful. I do. I, I genuinely do. But can we relax until the real game start? That's all. Let's relax until real games start. And let's see what these ladies, including Caitlin Clark, does when the real game starts. Albeit, they both made those fucking old hags look pretty bad. They made those old hags who are crying about, we'll see you in the league. And I never thought that Angel Reese would have a problem in terms of her hustle, her defense, her athleticism. My concern for her is her shooting. And if she can develop a 15-foot shot, that makes someone guard her outside from outside the rim and just catching people's air balls. She can be a very effective player. I don't know how long you can last living like Dennis Rodman in the WNBA with 12 teams. Like, I don't know how long that lasts because Bria Bell, who was a first, who was a second round pick last year, who was a starter for South Carolina, got cut by the aces. She's in her second year cut. Kate Martin made the team. Nick was right. I didn't think she made the team. She made a team. I told you she she's she took she took Bria Bell, she took Bria Bell's spot. She has one so, of those. She, she, <clears> she's <throat> gonna do everything you ask her to do. She's gonna make yeah. the right play, and you need players like that on your team. She's also like forty. I mean, she's twenty four years old. She's an old ass rookie. But no, congratulations to her because it's really hard to make a team in the WM because there's so few teams. So I, that's my only concern with Angel Reese's game is that she actually improves the game beyond just grabbing rebounds and catching air balls and, and shooting the ball back to her teammates and them shooting it back to her and whatever else, because you need skill to survive. You need some skills. And, you know, uh, but at the end of the day, like let's, 
let's let this let let real games happen. Uh, Diana Tarazi, uh, I think you look like a little fucking idiot because Caitlin Clark did bust 21 on the first game and she did put like three women on their ass <laughs> with shaking them just on crossovers strength, pretty much. Strength. She used strength. Yeah, I thought she was too weak. I guess she got stronger over the last four weeks. But uh, that said, we're going to jump. I'm, we're going to skip combat corner because, you know, the fights last week. I'm going to do it on a separate recording. Um, Let's jump into our closing, Nick. I did my closing, Tom Brady. What is your closing for today? Uh, oh, folks, this is the one where I'm telling you right now, you football players are going to hate this motherfucker. So, Austin Rivers say, Austin Rivers went and said that 30 NBA players can be planted into the NFL and play today. He said that's more than the NFL could do in the NBA. I agree with him to an extent. To an extent, to an extent. It is easier and more transferable for NBA players to make the leap to the NFL. Can you just plant them in there today and, and then be successful? Hell no, that's, that's not going to happen. Do we give them a little bit of training and studying schemes and things in that nature? Will they be able to? But the athletic ability, yes. The skills, yes. The mindset will be different, and that's what you have to fix. That's will be the difference. That's what we'll have to fix. So, that's what we'll have to fix. But when you come, when it comes down to that part of the game. They can do it easily. You and it's and it's been so you're telling me Westbrook can't be a safety? I apologize for the delay. Uh we have children problems in the background. <clears throat> but Nick will jump right back in. Um I might as well talk about combat corner for a second real fast, see if he comes back while I'm doing it. I just have a message really for John Jones. I'm really sick of reading all this Don, John Jones stuff because the John Jones stuff is driving me crazy. This man has held the belt for damn near two years. He's hurt. He can't fight. He doesn't want to fight. Tom Aspinall is the guy that he should be fighting. He doesn't want to fight Aspinall. Now he's talking about he would rather fight Pereira. We know why he'd rather fight Pereira because he looks at Pereira's guy he can take down. Tom Aspinall is a guy that would knock him on his ass. So if he can knock him on his ass, what's John Jones going to do? He's going to sit around and he's going to look for the easier fight because that's what John Jones typically looks to do. I'm sick and tired of it. If you're not going to fight, vacate the motherfucking belt. I'm tired of watching this shit. John Jones, either fight Tom Aspinall or get the fuck on. I'm tired of hearing about it. I don't care about your fight with Stipe Miocic. Most people do not care anymore because if you want to fight, what do you want to fight Stipe when he's 50? Nobody cares anymore. Stipe Miocic is 43 years old, 42 years old. He's old. He ain't fought in three years. And we want to have a fight with the greatest heavyweight of all time. Get the fuck out of here. If you're going to fight, fight. If you're not going to fight, get the fuck on. But Tom Aspinall is the guy to fight. He is the guy to fight, and he's the guy that will fucking destroy John Jones. And that's why John Jones doesn't want to fight him, because he knows Tom Aspinall is a bad motherfucker. And Tom Aspinall is going to come with his hands flying, and he will put John Jones out. So John Jones doesn't want any piece of that. He wants to keep his fake zero loss record because he has, does have that you know uh, disqualification loss. But I'm sick and tired of it. Shit or get off the pot, like my father used to say. And if you're not going to fight, the guy that people want to see you fight, nobody cares about Miocic. I don't care about Miocic. I love MMA. I have absolutely no interest in that fight. I would watch it if it happens, but I don't care about it because you're not fighting the Stipe Miocic who was the champion at 38, 39, 40. You're fighting a version who's a fucking senior citizen now if you ever do fight him. I don't care anymore. Nobody cares. Most people do not care. Fight Tom Aspinall or get the fuck on. Back to you, Nick, on Austin Rivers. Okay, so Austin Rivers, Austin Rivers clearly went out there and said that 30 NBA players right now can go in the NFL. You can plant them, make a play right now. He said that, you know, that's more than NFL players could go to the NBA because because of skills. NBA players, first of all, you need the size and things of that nature. For the most part, you're not going to have NBA players who could go and translate to the NFL. That's why for the 
fucking sake of me all the fucking time? Guess what scouts do? They go to the NBA. They, I mean, they go to college basketball, and they find six, six players, six, six, seven players, six, eight players. They find Antonio Gates. They find the the, the Gonzalez's. They find the Grams, and those people they grab them and they put them to the NFL because hey, they have the size, they have the skills, they got the feet work, and all we got to do is get them some hands and things of that nature. All you need is a little bit of training and things of that nature. And we teach them the skills and learning the playbook. They got sort of the physicality just because of their size, and we can plant them. They got the letters, so we throw the ball up to them, catch the ball. That's what we, and then in today's NFL, where it's not so much of the physicality of getting hit across the middle, they can do it. But back then, Gonzalez was getting hit across the middle, and he still made the, the translation to it. So can I, can I get a Lou Dort? to be a safety? Can I get a Jimmy Butler to be a safety? Can I get a LeBron James to be a tight end? Can I get a Zion Williams to be a tight end? Yes, with a little bit of training, you're not going to plant them there immediately and then be great at the position. But with time and a little bit of training, they have a better chance than any any NFL player trying to go trying to go to the, to the NBA. Because the skills in the NBA that it takes to be there and the size, they just won't get it from the from an NBA player for the most part. You've got a couple, Charlie Ward. you got a, I like the guy from uh, Keon Coleman. He had a, a tremendous highlight tape back in high school. So I like him at 6'4 and things of that nature. But there's not many players that's going to be able to make that transformation from the NFL or from football to the NBA. It just doesn't happen. I went, you know why I did it? And then you know what the fuck else happens? Who has the skills to play in the NBA prefer to play football? Nobody. If I could have played in the NBA, I would have played there. If I had the skills to play there, I would have played there. But you know what my skills were more were more suitable for even that I played basketball? My, my skills were speed and things of that nature. It was easily translatable to play football. Maybe I played football a little bit early in my career. But Anthony Edwards, somebody like that, I could see him being planted on the field and being able to do it. There, but there's not going to be many players on that side from the NFL who are going to be able to play in the NBA. But NBA to the NFL – we seen it. It happened a lot of times. What is a guy named um, Burns from NC State? They were looking at him to play offensive tackle because he has good feet. He's got hands, and there no chance. He might not have no chance, but no chance. He might not have no chance, but look, they're looking at it. They're thinking about it. They're scouts that's checking them out. There's no scouts in that in a fucking that 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 scouting uh, Football players that think they can play basketball. That's they're how. Weird. That's how. That's fucking how but... It's fucking rare. It's not gonna happen, Rudy. It's not gonna happen. If I could play basketball, I would play basketball, Rudy. But I can't because I'm not the... good enough with my skill set. It's more suitable for football because but for football, he... it's more for skill set. It's my skill. I just need speed, and then I could find things to. Then I go like I do is get the mindset for it, learn the, the playbooks and things in that nature. Basketball. Can you jump? Can you shoot? The most people that can shoot are quarterbacks, but you know what they can do? They can't run or do anything else. So, I'd uh, like to see Austin Rivers. We're not going to talk take, about Austin. We're not talking about Austin. He's one that he's one that said it. Though. But he can't. We're not talking about him. We no, talking about no. He said it. He's the one that went on the record on ESPN or whatever he was on and said, "I could take thirty players in the NBA right now and drop in the NFL." That is disrespectful. It's fucking ridiculous, and it's not true. No, no, because you, I, because I, of you course couldn't. not, not now. Because but I, it would, that's what he said. But I think with more, I think they take less. Tra- I don't care about with training. Less tra- I can make an, bro. I can make an NFL player who was a hooper in high school. If you give him a Thanasis Antetokounmpo Thanos. is in the NBA. Thanos could hoop. If Thanos will bust your Thanos ass. cannot hoop. Thanos, Thanos couldn't even hoop in Europe. Thanos, will, Thanos was uh, Thanos averaged four points in Europe. Thanos he will, could not hoop. He would bust no, your he, ass up and down the floor. He would bust my ass. He would bust any NFL player. He would bust my ass. Bust but, any, but, uh, I don't. I think Miles Garrett will forearm his ass into the yeah, ground, I mean, Miles, or Michael Parsons would put him on his back. He would bust any NFL player who uh, stepped ass. I don't back. believe that. I don't think he's a good basketball Man, player. Rudy, period. Rudy, he's said, not even. He's not even Brian Scalabrini level. For you, his highlight tape was pretty awesome. His fucking highlight tape of the fucking eighteen minutes he's played in fucking three years. I'm sorry. If a guy like him can play professional basketball no, no, no. and he would not have a job if not for his brother, no, he should no. be playing in Europe somewhere in Turkey or France or Greece or some other fucking country. That might be he true, be- but that's but how not- good he is. He's still Dude. good. Nobody. But he's not good. He's only there because of his brother. Dude, he can if play. it wasn't for Giannis, he would not be he's, on he anyone's can- team. Giannis could play a little bit. I'm not going to say he's good. He barely fucking played in, the, in Europe. 
But he can play. Like, this is a fact. That's how good NBA players, that's how much skills it takes to be an NBA player. That somebody no, like you're him, not hearing me. He barely played in Europe. That's what I'm saying. That somebody, he wasn't good enough. And he, and he has oh, he has skills. And, and most NFL players Nick, won't have that many skills. He wasn't good enough, though. He wasn't good enough for Europe basketball. But, Why is he good enough for NBA basketball? Why? Because well, his brother's we, name is Giannis. Well, we know that's nepotism. We know that. So, well, Nep- then that then that's what I said Nep- five times Nep- already. Nepotism. We and know you're that. arguing with me, but he has skills. I can tell you right now, I got there's guys in the NBA right now that I think Antonio Hester, who played at Norland, is better than right now. But he's 34 or 33. But, we have a lot of NBA players that aren't that fucking good. No, no, they're not that good. Yeah, Rudy, if, and, if you see them, if you see them play, you'll be like, "Damn!" Yeah, at the park and in, in, in LA. Fitness. Against anybody, not, against a regular not, person. Again, a, 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 fine, Nick. I am telling you right now, you drop any of them motherfuckers onto a football field, they'll go back to basketball before the practice is over. Thinking, before it's over, thinking, LeBron James flops like a fucking little pussy bitch in an NBA game. That's, Imagine him getting hit by a two hundred and sixty pound linebacker over the middle when he. Gets brushed on. Yeah, he played high school I think, football I think against mind, little, a little, these little Smurfs. His, in Catholic mind, school his mindset will change. Ohio. His mindset will no, change. Well, his mindset is his mindset. Now, do I think there are guys? Yes, Jimmy Graham did play. Jimmy Graham couldn't play basketball. I covered him. He was not a good basketball player at all. He was a bruiser. He was a bruiser. He was in the wrong sport. He was a so yes, he went over in college to my to the football team and played college football. So he had time. To grow as a player. He's One also 6'8". <clears throat> Nick, we're talking about dropping the NFL. Drop no, in the I'm, NFL. I'm not, Drop in the it, NFL. Of course. And most of these guys you mentioned, did Russell Westbrook even play college football, high school football? But I'm just saying, but, but you can see. No, no, I'm asking but, you. Did, did Zion Williamson play high school football? I'm just talking about how they can move and things of that nature. You can, I don't care you how can, they can move. Can these, fuckers didn't, these fuckers get, cry about being hit. In the NBA, not Zion. Zion run through run through people. You put twenty pounds on Zion. He's the old, he's a left tackle. Oh, 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 let's put let's make him a left. Let's make him three hundred pounds again. Okay. Or we lose, um, or we lose he, twenty he tight end. Or we lose thirty pounds. But he's a tight end. It depends on what you want to do with him. I, I, I think it's mad disrespectful, and I think Austin Rivers should 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 challenge himself and go ask for the nearest team to go try out for. And see if he can get through one no, football not, NFL not football Austin. practice. He's talking about other people. He's talking yeah, about no, but he's dude. If you can't live what you said, no, 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 then no, don't no. say it. No, 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 no. If no. you cannot live the bullshit that comes out your mouth, no, no, no. I can, don't sit here. I can know what other people can do. Like a coach could coach football who never who didn't play football in, in, in years ago, or or basketball coach who didn't play and they know enough X's and O's to be a fucking coach. I can tell you. But what is the coach again? You're talking about coaching and playing. No, I'm. Who are I, the? You, you're. you're no, who I'm are just the guys? A comparison. To, to how him saying it could translate for other people because he know other people could do it. Okay. All right. So did, did he name who? No, no, no. No. No, he didn't. No, no. Because we... the reality is these guys can't do it. It's hard. It's, it's football hard is the sport. most physical. Football is the most physical fucking sport. You know what you can get from a football player in a basketball game? Fouls. Not just that. That's one thing. Yes. <laughs> But you know what you can get from a football, a six foot six football player in a basketball game? If you literally put him in the corner and teach him to shoot a three? Teach him to shoot. But what are you going to do? Teach him? What, if he, what if he played basketball in high school? I don't know. A lot of guys played, a lot of football players played basketball in high school back when I was in high hey, school. Hey, I know the world's changed. You might have to, but, you might confine But guys a, were hoopers. So, so the only The thing- best player at Dillard, I believe it was, that beat Northern a few times in the last decade. Was a defensive end. You might could find a couple receivers <clears throat> who can play guard because they're six four, six five. But usually D linemen and shit who are. I'm two, talking about. Two eighty. Give me a six foot six guy that from the NFL. That's six six, six NFL what player. Play? He's PJ Tucker. Oh Lord, have mercy. He's PJ Tucker. So disrespect to PJ Tucker. Who could go? Oh fuck! I, you know what? Disrespect. This man is a defensive player. And if, if he's physical, if PJ Tucker, and he stands in the corner if, and shoots threes if PJ once Tucker, in a while. If PJ Tucker played against any of the NFL players, he'll be looking like fucking Michael Jordan. So get the fuck right, out of here. Uh, well, that. well, I, I, you know what? I don't. I think you just overhyped PJ Tucker for more than what he is. <laughs> he's a defensive player. I, I, you know what? I like. I like. He a, plays defense. I like a couple. What is the thing that a defense? Uh, what is the thing that an NFL player could do that you cannot coach? You either you can just do it. You don't need to coach it. Defense. 
Yeah, defense. De- defensive defense. football and defensive basketball is different things. The sliding, the things that. Yes, they're... you're gonna catch some fucking forearms into your ribs. Foul out the game. Ah, uh, maybe in 1990, I had a fucking we're not, foul. We're not in 1990. Foul today. We're not in 1990. Again, there's a lot of guys in the NFL. CJ Stroud was a hooper. They yeah. showed video of CJ Stroud lighting up Tommy Hawkins' team for 45 points. Most, most quarterbacks can can shoot. He's six four, six three. He most, was a hooper. He was a hooper. Most quarterbacks can shoot. I'll give you that. So let's. Charlie Ward was a quarterback and a point guard. Yeah. Like. Let's let's not ignore but I'm that say, he played the NBA because he chose to because he could have started at any NFL team when because, he came out of college. But he was just in a different time where black quarterbacks was just scrutinized for being black. Quarterbacks. Well, yeah, and he's also six foot two. fucking one and or six two and at a time when you had to be six five. At a time where you'd be six five, and, and and the reality is, why would you play in NFL if you could play in the NBA? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but again. NBA ain't drafting yeah. six foot seven, three hundred pound fucking linemen to play in the NBA. Yeah, because they can't move up. And, and I don't think Lebr- I don't think LeBron James at six eight would last five fucking minutes in the NFL practice. No, I think he would. I would light him up the first fucking play and see. Do you really want to play football? I don't. How, how you? And gonna... the answer would be no. Brock Lesnar couldn't last in the NFL. Brock Lesnar. Who's that? Who's a free? Who was Brock Lesnar? I know. I said he's on the D line. That's a little different. He didn't last. He couldn't get out of at a, at a, at a Minnesota Vikings training camp. Yeah, because he can't move. He can't move. He can't get off the line of scrimmage like he needs to. He can't fire off and do. They those. gave him fucking three weeks, dude. Yeah, he can't fire off the line of. They scrimmage. gave him three, four weeks, man. Come on. That's all. He didn't get. A, he didn't get the time to fucking actually learn. Sometimes. But all... you know what? But you know what these box these guys in MMA are doing now? They want to fucking fight boxers. These fuckers can't box. It's insulting. Have respect for people's no, fucking craft, no, man. I, I, I am so bothered by this mentality. You can just walk over. Oh, you know, you know who, you know what, you know what? I'll give you one. I'm going to give you one final. Real quick. You can go off at the end. You know what none of these motherfuckers can do? What's that? They can't play baseball. Well, we know that. You drop any of them motherfuckers. You drop the best athlete of all of them. About Probably the only one that can play is Kyler Murray. I was about to say. Because he was, because he was a baseball player. I'm pretty None sure some pitch, I'm pretty sure some of the quarterbacks are pitchers. No, not nah, not not major league level. Um, otherwise, they would be playing in the major leagues, making a lot more money than they're making in professional football. Um, and that guaranteed contracts. A little boring. Boring or not, your your career will last 17, 18 years instead Actually. of like twelve. If you're lucky in the NFL, five if you're lucky. They can't play baseball. They can't jump in and go hit a ninety-eight mile hour fastball. Is Austin Rivers going to then tell me that you could drop an NBA player and then fuck? But we, we saw the greatest NBA player of all time jump into baseball and hit 200 in the minors against the this, scrubs. Well, this is not the conversation, Rudy. We're talking about basketball. It's the basketball. scrubs. So I, I just think it's a massive disrespect that Austin Rivers would get on a TV as a fucking broadcaster now and make that type of bullshit comment because like, you can't because you can't name one guy right now who I can drop in and say you can go start in that team or you can, hell you can make that team there's not one and not the, with training with just show up and go there's not one and, and there's not one in reverse Anthony Edwards could play safety no he could not you could not drop him in and just say go safety you could not drop him in and say go Westbrook a six six safety Westbrook running back. <laughs> a six six safety that uh, six five. He's six four actually. <clears throat> he's only six four. I, I don't want to hear it. He's only Drop somebody in who's never played football before into an NFL team. Onto an NFL team. Let me stop the, the cap. Like stop the cap. Most basketball most basketball players play a little bit of football. I'm just saying it's more. How much football? How much football do you think Jason Tatum's played? We're not going to talk about Jason Tatum. How, how much football is Zion? Zion Williamson did not play football in high school, Nick. Yeah, but he played he played elementary level basketball against guys that were four foot four, in in the in the in the smallest classification in South Carolina. I remember the video of the little white dude guarding him. He's looking at him like, what is this? Yeah, that's the level of competition he played in high school in basketball. You can imagine how small they were in football, and he didn't even play football. Charles Barkley said that freaking he went to one practice for freaking. For freaking Auburn football, and that he made him a basketball player. <laughs> and Charles Barkley's a big motherfucker. Hey, getting hit is not fun. I made a change. You made a change because you had a skill that cannot be coached. That's... You had a skill that cannot be taught. You're 
fast. If you ran a 4-8, no one would have looked a second at the guy that didn't play one fucking snap of college football or varsity football in high school. But you have a skill. And the thing and that, you can that's and the thing that work. And the thing that stopped me from being in the NFL was the, the mindset at that time of learning the plays and and, and the knowledge of how to be a pro. Because you came for how many years did you like you were like six years behind? Yeah, so that's the problem with it, the, the skills, the knowledge of the game, like that <clears> part is <throat> the hardest part. It's really the hardest part. I mean, I remember my high school playbook in football. It was like five pages. Yeah, I could I could run with anybody. Even what is what is even, the playbook in the NFL? A manual? Man, that's that's per week. That's per week. It switches every per, every week. I, I couldn't remember the plays like from play to play. Uh, toss forty four, whatever the fuck we did, we ran the option, triple option. Yeah. And you're sitting here like people don't even know what the triple option that, is anymore. That's why I um, that's why I didn't play receiver when I went to football because I was like, I'm not gonna learn all those plays. You remember all these routes? I say it was easy. I was easier for me to play DB and learn. Oh, I'm in man. I'm in zone. I'm in a different type of zone and things of that nature. But even then I found out it was harder than, than just that. So Yeah, I I I I just have too much respect for what people no, do. I, in their I have more respect. I just think it's I don't so, think Austin so, Rivers does. So I think my thing is I, I changed what Austin Rivers said a little bit more. It's more it's the transition from from football to basketball. From from basketball to football would be easier for football to basketball. That's that's all I I, I feel. I uh, didn't Tony Gonzalez get some workouts in the NBA. Yeah, for the Miami Heat. Yeah, he could have played in the NBA. He, Chose not to. He would. He would have played in the NBA, like you just said. Like you just said. He could have played. In, he could have played in the NBA. You, he chose not to because his likelihood of a lengthy career was football. Yeah, exactly. But he could have played in him because he did get the workouts. He got the opportunity. That that don't mean nothing. A lot of people get the workouts. Miami, but... The Miami Heat turned fucking doo-doo into fucking diamond, man. What are you talking about? We made a fucking lard-ass Ike Austin in the 90s look like a superstar. Ike we Austin. made Hassan Whiteside from a bus driver to a fucking hundred millionaire. We turned Gabe Vincent and Max Struess into multi-millionaires. Duncan Robbins is making $90 million. Played Division three basketball. Like, we... And he went to Michigan after that, but he played Division Three initially. Like we created players out of shit. <laughs> Rudy, you look and like shit. You look like you're sick. You, you're I look sick. like shit. You're sick. I look sick. You're, you're, you're a little wet. You look like you've been. I'm sweating. Yeah. I'm hot. I'm hot as fuck. Yeah, because you're, you're, you're sick. Ah, uh, I'm always hot. I'm always hot. But guys, that's all we got for today. I don't have nothing else. Nick, do you have anything else? Nope. Follow us no. on blah, 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 blah. Really right. <laughs> yeah, follow us on uh, fuck, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. I come on now podcast and, and an X Twitter. Come on now pod. Again, we thank you. Get us to 600 subscribers. Heck, give us, get us to 1,000 subscribers by the end of, I'm going to give us a deadline. This month. End of July. That's a tough one. I mean, heck, if you get us that thousand by the end of, end of May, that's fabulous. We'll hit the next tier on, on monetization, you know, with uh, YouTube. But again, we really thank you for, for 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 hanging with us. We're at two hours and almost thirty minutes. Jesus Christ! Um, but yeah, it, it, we got a uh, yeah, man. We 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 uh, we miss Donald. We need him here today. We don't have any Don's dimes, but we got a lot of information on CFL. So. Uh, we're gonna have a lot more CFL stuff coming forward. Yeah, I'm gonna cut a little short a little bit, but I, I don't it know. It's a power ranking. I don't know anything about the CFL. I'm it's honest. It's, it's really a fun fucking game to watch, man. <clears throat> if y'all really paid attention to the rules, they don't have that sucker crap where special teams don't matter. Special teams matter. I know they changed the rules a little bit this year about special teams, but special team count, man. You kick the ball at the end zone, you don't return the ball, you get penalized for it. You got to return the ball. They give you a a five yard rule on punts, so everything. It's returnable. They, they, you can't kick the ball out the end zone because you kick the ball. It feels 110 yards, and you're kicking the ball from the fucking 30. So you basically can't really kick the ball out the end zone. So everything's returnable. Um, uh, special I teams took, come every two plays because if you don't get a first down and two downs, you got to – special teams matter. So all I, three phases matter in the CFL, and that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it exciting and exhilarating. Um, you really have to throw the ball and push the ball. So if you like throwing the ball, you like big plays, the CFL for you – the offense got a little bit of advantage because they get the waggle, but it's a little, it's still a little different, but it's interesting, man. Pay attention, watch it, give it a chance, and I guarantee you might freaking fall in love with it if you understand the rules.
Well, they got they got to put it on TV in the U.S. Um, they do that, have a couple games every they, week. More cons- they gotta they gotta push it the way they're pushing the WNBA wow. now. Yeah. Instead of wasting our time with the fucking UFL or whatever the hell this crap is, the combination of the XFL and UF USFL, the the league that the Rock couldn't sustain, you know, sustain for a year without getting other people involved because he went probably lost his shirt on that crap. But I'd rather watch the CFL because it's better football than the shit that they play in the UFL it's and fun. whatever. It's crap funny, is. I can't lie. I, I did tell you earlier this week I had a nightmare, right? Yeah, what's the nightmare? Tell us. The nightmare about. was that I watched an NFL football game. Oh Lord, have mercy! I had a nightmare that I was watching an NFL football game. I was watching five yard kickoff returns where the guys are five yards apart, and I'm watching everything go back for a touchdown. That's what I, 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 that was the dream, the nightmare. I'm it watching an NFL it, football. It might excite you, man. It, might. it was. I'm watching. I'm watching with guardian caps, the helmet condom. I'm watching penalties called and everything. And really? I'm watching kickoffs go back and forth. At least, at least that's better than nothing because. They weren't even returning shit, so I guess that's better. I'd rather have nothing. No, 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 no. I'd rather. Them. I would rather. I'd rather push the kickoff back to the fifteen yard line and make them kick. And they should. R- r- bring back the wedge. Bring back the fucking crackback. Bring back the blindside block. Let's bring back real football because we are destroying this game that used to be beautiful. I mean, heck, if we want to watch freaking ballet dancing, let's just watch ballet dancing because that's what football's turning into. Wow. Okay. That's, yeah. And that's how we. End that's it. all we got for this week. Again, we thank you. We love you. And we will see you next week. Peace. Come on now. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.